from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, comedian and musician Morgan J. And we'll talk AI with the host of Human vs. Machines, Dr. Gary Marcus. Plus, new father Chris Loxamana is back with the news, and now a man who knows a lot about debt and a lot about ceilings, but not a lot about the debt ceiling. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. Chris Maxipata back in studio to fill us all in on the birth of his new child. Yeah, missed you, Adam. Missed you, man. What uh, oh, what do we need to know? Okay, well, um, yeah, so I had a baby boy born on May 6th. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, as far as the it, – it's my first, my first kid, and, yeah, so Jen's water broke mm, at, like, yeah. 6 a.m., Mm-hmm. So she didn't. She obviously was. She's never had her water break before either. So we were both wondering, is is this it? So I had her smell it because mm-hmm. I I heard in on my baby books, right? It it says that it doesn't. It shouldn't smell like anything. So I'm like, touch it and smell it, and then we'll know if your water broke. Mm-hmm. She said it smelled like nothing. I started the car. I had the go bags. Mm. Uh, packed. Pa- yeah, all packed up. The hospital. Literally bags. packed the day before because this uh, this baby was eight days early. So, mm-hmm. um, so I, I got it just right under the wire. Got her in the car. Drove her to the hospital. Did you pack the duct tape and the WD forty in that go bag. Oh well, yeah, just that's in all case. You need. I, well, of course that that's a universal. Yeah. Uh, that's in every bag, not just any go bag. Good, good. So to the hospital. To the hospital. Um, commandeered a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. It was so early that even the valet at the hospital was closed. Everything was so I just commandeered her. What time was it? Uh, we got there at seven. You'd seven a.m. Yeah, yeah, you'd think that hospitals would be <laughs> fully operational. When by I then. work construction, at seven a.m. You had to be rolled out. Oh, that's so the afternoon said, in construction. You, you don't show up at seven. You're rolled out, meaning air hoses, cords, everything's rolled out at seven a.m. And you're working at seven a.m. And then I did morning radio where you're rolled out at six a.m. So you'd think the hospital. Will be rolled out. Uh, you you would think um, they weren't. Mm-hmm. So brought her up. Obviously, they admitted her because if your water breaks, you're instantly admitted. Sometimes if you're having contractions, they'll go. Oh, we don't know. We'll send mm-hmm. you home. But uh, yeah, the the labor was short and quick and swift. They put her on pitocin, which induced it. Like mm-hmm. and she just took to it right away. Um, yeah, and it was just a crazy experience. I mean, I'm I'm really queasy. Like I won't I won't even watch an R-rated horror movie. Yeah, let alone like. Seeing a, a, a birth of a, the birth of a child, a, a, a child crowning, anything like that, just, uh, it's Chris, crazy. Chris it's crazy. would have rather read the Wikipedia on the birth of his child than actually witnessed it. Yeah, because yeah. I still want to know the plot. But, um, but I don't know. Something during the birth, they they asked me, "Do you want to look?" <laughs> As it was going, like, "Do you want to see what's? Do you want to see this?" And of course, my first instinct is no. Right. Absolutely not. That's disgusting. But. This is the birth of my child. And something changed in me. I don't know if it's chemically. It's just in the moment, I had. I was like, yeah, I definitely want to see this. So they try to convince you to cut the yeah. cord? Yeah, and it was... What, were they doing a hard sell on the watching of the birthing of the child? They brought out a mirror. They brought a mirror out. Yeah. They did a so few, we both could see. Did a few rails. <laughs> You did a freeze, yeah. and then you got back to your conversation. Yeah, I, needed, I needed to be a little did more. Did a few crazy. rails, checked yourself out, yeah. Yeah. gave yourself the finger point. Yeah. All right, honey, you do it. Lick the eyebrows, yeah. Uh, um, my sense from the entire experience was they wanted you to do a bunch of stuff that you instinctually didn't really want to do, but then they would explain to you that it was important yeah. that you do. And I feel like a lot of life falls under the heading of people trying to convince me that this thing is important. And it's not like when Jimmy and I fired our manager, he said, we got to go in and do it in person. And I said, why don't we just call him up and fire him? And he's like, it's important. And I'm like, it sounds uncomfortable to me. And he's like, we got to go down there and do it. But the thing is, is when Jimmy and Adam, who've never asked to come to your office and sit with you at the same time over and there's nothing going on asked to do it. You already know you're getting fired. So then it makes it <laughs> weird, brutal. weirdly and more, more uncomfortable. And then at some point you go, um, 
can we shut the door to the office and then they know firing is now imminent uh, and it's all uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it, my it, feeling is do it over the phone. Yeah, it, it, if you're thinking if it's important or not, it, the end result should matter. If the end result is the same, then it's not that important. Like your manager is going to hate your guts either way and be devastated either way. So, well, I remember that part with the ultrasound where they wanted to give me the tape, and I was like, I don't need the tape. And <laughs> it's were like, what do you mean you don't need the tape? It's it's important to see the like, tape. Like a VHS? Yeah, like a VHS wow. tape. And I was like, Why? How many times are you going to replay that? Oh, I'll never forget the conversation. <laughs> well, you played I don't want to watch the one. love boat. Let's yeah. watch the yeah. ultrasound of my You'll child. never watch it. If your kids did watch it, they'd freak out. Anyone would freak out. You're not meant to see you being formed in a womb. <laughs> and uh, uh, like yesterday, the conversation was the tech saying, yeah, you take the tape. And I said, ah, I'm good. And she said, how could it hurt? And I said, how could it help? Yeah. And that was it. We were done with our conversation. Yeah. But yes. I will say, I will pat myself on the back that I was able to handle it, and I was fine, which I was really surprised by. I don't know, maybe because the did, moment was so powerful. Did you have to, were you then, the next coach is cut the cord. Yeah. They, I didn't find anything very ceremonious about it personally, but they said, oh, you got to cut the cord. And what they did is they put like two mini like C clamps uh, um, about, I don't know, two, three inches apart, and so just cut in between that. So it's already marked for me, and I just literally, it's just, I'm just cutting the tube in a place where they marked it for me. I think I cut the cord when it wasn't even attached just to raw. mom. Just raw. I, I like, oh, first off, is this a ceremony where we're opening a hospital for children? Like, uh, what are we doing with the cord cutting? Do you know what I mean? Like, I get you have the politician and the executive and they're wearing the three piece suit and the chrome hard hat and we're cutting this ribbon and then we're waving in a bunch of Mexicans to come in and like finish the work while we go out and have lunch. Yeah. It's just it, that's what it felt like to me. Same. I'm not doing anything here. It's just a groundbreaking ceremony. It's a groundbreaking ceremony. And then the, the other part of it was like when when they were talking about cutting the cord, they were like, "You want to cut the cord?" They didn't say ceremoniously uh, over here. They were like, be, "They were just saying cut the cord." Like I was involved, and I said, "No, nah, I don't." Yeah. Now forgive my my ignorance here, but with twins, are there two cords? Do you get two chances? <laughs> I think they took one and doubled it up. Ah, uh, I, I, I I get all of the ceremony of, in life, and then they do this thing where they go, "You're gonna be sorry." <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to be sorry. Mm. How would I ever be like, yes, this is going to haunt me. I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night when, I, or when I attend the kid's high school graduation, I'm yeah. going to have a flashback to not cutting the cords. They'll throw I, it in your face later. There must be some upcharge or something they're doing <laughs> for it. I, I don't, I don't know. I should have looked at the bill. It was probably another 171 bucks for the cord cutting, but you did that. You did the actual mirror. Did the mirror, did the cord, like, yeah, the regular, a natural, I guess, nat vaginal birth. I don't know what that. Yeah, sure. yeah. And regular. you did the cord cutting. Did the cord cutting. Um, yeah, just held her, held Jen's hand. Just you know, just tried to get in her ear, and so she didn't realize hear everything else. Because what happens is there's a there's a single nurse that's kind of guiding her, and then when it's go time, like an F one pit crew just comes in with a doctor and like four different assistants. It's like mm -hmm. shh, shh, shh. they they do it all, and the second it's over, they're out. Mm -hmm. As in just like they vanish like ghosts. Right. Things that sound alike that probably shouldn't. Lamar and Lamas. Yeah. Uh, did you guys do uh, yeah. any of that prep good? No, th and and that's a really generational thing too because all a lot of our parents, uh, the parents and like the and aunts and uh, uncles, they're just like, oh yeah, you guys have YouTube, and you can just look all this stuff up in real time, whatever you need, whatever's wrong. So we we that's what we we have YouTube, we have Google, so we have all these resources immediately available. Whereas back then. You just had the classes. Now, when little Loxie first came out and took uh, his first breath. Oh, yeah. Um, how was that Maybe. breath induced? Keep in mind that when Adam and I were born, we were most likely hung by our ankles and <laughs> spanked on the butt. Yeah. That, that did not happen. They just, they just took him. They, it looked like they tossed him right onto Jen's stomach. Just like just basically tossed him. He coughed out a bunch of fluid, started crying, and that was it. Wow. No, hmm. yeah. No, it was... How long awesome. were you guys in the hospital after that? Like we we're we we're in there we we're at the hospital for about two and a half days because they have mm -hmm. to monitor and mm -hmm. um, yeah and you just, I'm just sleeping on the couch in the in the small room 
It was uh yeah, it, was, it felt like a sleepover. It, you you I don't know, man. You witnessed the creation of life. It's crazy. It's it, crazy. It, honestly, the the most powerful thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah, just so much so much love brought in the house. Uh, uh, there there is there's Ben named him after named him after producer Ben. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember we had a birthing suite. I remember I got yelled at for using the bathroom. That's uh, oh yeah. I've, there's a suite in the bathroom, or bathroom in the suite, and I went and used it. There's no one else in the suite. And then when I stepped out, the nurse was standing there, and then she goes, that's just for the patient. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, well, what are you going to do? Take the piss and stuff it back up my cock, bitch. <laughs> who's, who's paying for she's it? She's like, uh, yeah, well, that's for the patient. And uh, she goes, uh, she did my favorite thing where she's like, well, next time. I said, there's no next time. These are twins. This is it. I'm old. <laughs> we're done. Yeah. And she's like, well, yeah. And I was like, I don't know. Do you want to keep talking about this? I took a piss. It's done. What are you going to do? I flushed the toilet. It's over. When I talked to her head, whatever nurse, later, a little later in the day, I go, I don't know if you notice it, but that nurse you got over there, she's a pain in the ass. And she goes, yeah, I know. She bugs everyone. And I go, isn't that yeah, validating? Why don't though? you fire her? <laughs> I, I, it's it, for, it, for a moment, it's validating. And then the second thought is outrage. Like she's coming in and fucking with people at their most vulnerable time in life. And you're aware of it. And you've not been able to get her to curtail this behavior. Like, I hate it when people go, yeah, that's what everyone says. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're her supervisor. Do something. Right. Yeah, they our, our nurse got mad at uh, Jen's brother, who was over, and he tried to use the bathroom. I was able to use it. I, I guess maybe they, they changed the rules now. O only uh, Jen and me and I could use it. Oh, so there was a bathroom issue with oh, yeah. the brother. Yeah, with the, yeah, we were the only two that were allowed. But did he use it and then get reprimanded? No, like no I did? He, he cracked the door, attempted to walk in, and was immediately stopped and said, you got to get out. Or you got to go out. It's not like you go over this before you go in there. There's just a bathroom in the room you're in. So you go, well, yeah. fuck it. I'm not going down the hall. I'll just use, use this one. Did they do the thing that most infuriated me when my boy girl twins were born, which is they... And this should have been, this is maybe the beginning of the movement that sort of slid under the radar for everyone and um, Dylan Mulvaney and boys are girls and girls are boys. The only knit beanies they had for the kids were blue and pink mm. striped. Yeah, so we had then a blue, blue one. You had a blue one. Mm -hmm. But was there a pink one? I, well, I don't know. I mean... Uh, blue could just have been for everybody, but we definitely got a blue and white. We had a blue striped. and pink striped, which is like, I got a boy and a girl, and I can't tell the difference between them. And you guys have outlawed the <laughs> beanie that suggests their sex. I will say, I don't think they think about that. Their their priority is baby stealing, mm. right? Like, you have to check in. You can't, um, like, Jen works at that hospital. We, we mm -hmm. went to, to Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach, a wonderful hospital. And uh, her friends couldn't come visit because they were in scrubs. They won't let anybody in scrubs come up to the floor. Because Cause they could walk out with the kid. Right. And anybody in scrubs who walks into my room goes, hey, I'm going to need this kid for a little bit. I always I would just go, yeah, sure, take yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, no scrubs. Anytime I had a bag with me, they had to look in the bag. Oh, because, yeah. yeah, you could get Baby's a baby in the bag. a big deal. And then you got home. What was the schedule like when you got home? Um, full, we, we we had to feed him every two to three hours, which is rough. I'm still pretty loopy. The sleep schedule. I mean, they tell you. Everybody tells you, oh, you're, you're going to lose a lot of sleep. And, yeah, it's it's more true <laughs> than I, I could have ever imagined. But it's weird because it's simultaneously so worth it. Mm -hmm. Like, this kid is incredible. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't, I don't mind waking up for him. I don't mind changing his diaper. I love him. Um, mm -hmm. I've already played Wow Wow Wubsy for him like 10 times. Yeah. He's the he coolest. needs to know who yeah, the coolest he, is. I get it now. I yeah. get it. Yeah. We had a night nurse, so I didn't have to get up and I was doing morning radio. So I, and I don't, I believe, I don't know. My recollection is. I gotta figure this one out. So when was Ben or Dawson Dawson to figure this out? Um, it would have been June seventh, two thousand and six. 
what day was that? Because my recollection is I took off a Friday, but it could have been a Thursday and a Friday. And my also my recollect, oh, it was a Wednesday. So then I probably took off Wednesday. I remember maybe Kimmel Thursday. You. Kimmel and Joe Rogan, as I recall. Wow. And I, I have this, I don't recall Rogan. I recall I, Kimmel. I have a Joe Rogan memory. Now, Joe could have been booked as a guest on mm-hmm. that show anyway and just came in. But I remember Rogan and Kimmel. I think Kimmel took over for me. I remember calling them from like the parking lot because, of course, I had to check in on the, you know, four hours of morning radio, got to check in. I probably took off Wednesday and Thursday and came back on Friday. That's a Giovanni question. Or maybe I waited till Monday. I have to figure it out. But, um, yeah, I, I, I took the day off, had the kid, called in. Rogan was there somewhere. I don't remember if he was there the next day. Jimmy filled in, and that's, that's my only recollection. Went home, had a night nurse, so it made getting up at 5 in the morning easier. Did mm. I heard that you guys tried to hold these babies in because otherwise they would have been born on 666? Well, they were true? scheduled to be C-sectioned on 666, uh. and we decided not wanting, uh, you know, the mark of the beast sure. to follow them around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which, would, hey, look, would have been fine for me and my atheist clan, <laughs> yeah. but you'd get some deeply religious Guatemalan woman at the DMV, and she'd be like, ay, caramba, ay, you know, and start speaking in tongues and, like, moving her yeah. hand around when the kid's going for his permit at 16. You know, I didn't, I didn't want that following them of around. Course. But uh, they could have been... Yeah, a 666, and I guess there's an opportunity to go 666 every 100 years. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that would have been a conversation piece. (laughs) Of course. But then one of them, if one of them turned out to be like a serial killer— I, th- I I feel like Gergos could have gotten some use out of that in court. You know what I mean? Like, Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is marked under the sign of the beast. Like, what choice? <laughs> you- well, look, you can make arguments that your kid was traumatized or molested, and, and that's why they killed. You know what I mean? And the, the jury might go, like, all right, I get it. He was molested, and then he killed the priest. You know, like, there's some pre-existing yeah. circumstances there mark of the beast you know and also when when uh Garagos is doing his jury pooling you know he knows what he's doing yeah. he's like is that a slayer t-shirt you, you see the movie <laughs> omen or, or damien or i notice you're carrying a bible is that something uh oh christian interesting yeah he would select the right people yeah like deeply religious people who would be affected by it who would be affected by it and that would be you know viable yeah you want the church goers mm-hmm. <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that, that's an argument and now um this it's also I, kind of an argument of why they need to be incarcerated for the rest of their life though so it could yeah. backfire on you too yeah it's good that you just don't have to deal with it mm-hmm. in any capacity now i also had my son circumcised mm-hmm. and there's a lot especially these days like i get a lot of talk um, like, oh, you know, that's an ancient ritual. Uh, you know, studies have shown that the health benefits aren't even anything, but it's, I don't know, it's an American thing, and I, I have no idea, but I, we, we just got him circumcised just because that's all we know, and mm-hmm. you know, we just figured, it, you know, in, in his future, well, you know, it might help him along in life if he's similar to the other boys in the locker room. I, I don't know. Yeah, you, what, you, what you can't have when you're starting out in your sexual life is a weird dick. <laughs> And, That's what I was thinking. <laughs> and looking out for him. I I don't know what it's like in today's locker rooms in 2020. Yeah, man, can we get a staff poll here? Where, where'd he go? <laughs> I'm kidding. Dawson's uncomfortable. No, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm just uncomfortable. What I don't get is why everyone else is concerned with what you. Why Why does it matter to anybody? I don't. People I, well, who would speak. It, I don't know why it, it doesn't matter, but to, like I, I know which ones. Of, which life. one of my friends are uncut? Like they, I know which which ones are. Well, I think I know which ones of mine are too. Yeah. yeah. The 
Yes, I agree with Dawson. I have no idea why people have one shit to give for right. you and your son's foreskin. I have no idea. They'll they'll see they'll do some they'll do some things like the risk of spreading penal cancer to your partner goes up tenfold. But what it is, if you're uncircumcised or circumcised, they'll throw some numbers around, but the reality is is the risk is essentially zero to almost nothing. So it's one of these things where they you saw them do a lot of that with COVID. You know what I mean? They go, oh, this this group is twice as likely to to be claimed by COVID. Yeah, twice as likely than the group who wasn't affected at all is still nothing. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of hot cock talk around foreskins. I'm with you. Anything that doesn't uh, make them look different at the shower and junior high, that's that's a dad move. Yeah, that's good. See, I'm already I'm already doing dad moves, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, took him home. Jen's doing great. Uh, Bennett is his is his real name is his full name. It's a good name. Thank you. Yeah, I was. Gosh, the the naming was was hard naming a boy these days. Like, like you can't have the same name as anybody you know and mm. any of their kids. Right. You can't. Uh, yeah. Just uh, um, everyone has kind of a really unique name mm-hmm. these days. Like mm-hmm. I have friends that are elementary school teachers, and yeah, their class lists are. Oh my god! Yeah. Are, <laughs> are, are we the last so Adam, Michael, and Chris's? Perhaps. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, so it's it, done. Coming up with a name, but then you told me like, dude, names don't even matter, and and I I believe that too. So I wasn't really too well, crazy I, about it. I think what we do is we kind of think the name makes you, but you make the name, yeah. and we don't really understand how that works. But you sort of make make your name, and I think when you put too much of an emphasis on the name. You take it away from you having to sort of make make your name. And that's why I don't like any of the prince or queens or any of that right. noble shit. Because it's it's a it's a sort of a I don't know, it's just, for the same reason I don't like buying the lottery or or buying into the lottery or buying lottery tickets. I don't like reparations for this reason. Like don't sit around and try to figure out what outside forces are going to create a good life for you. You just go ahead and do it yourself. Right. It's also assigning unearned credit, Your Majesty. Right. You know? Uh, and on the other hand, Adam, you hate when people name their children after criminals like Jesse James Hollywood. Right. Like, what do you expect? Yeah, I don't like the Jesse and the James because that gets them going down that road. Right. The other... But if you named your kid... Jesse James Corolla, if I named Sonny Jesse James Corolla and I let him be born on 666, yeah. Garagos, yeah. They, that jury fucking walk out of there same day, innocent. Yeah. He had too much going against His it. His destiny would have been solidified <clears throat> at birth. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, this whole new parent thing, uh, one of the thoughts that really helped me get through all this, and it still get, helped me get through this, is um, I am, I'm pretty dumb. And the fact that... Mm-hmm. Dumber people than I have succeeded at this. Oh, yeah. Helps me so much thinking about that. Yeah. So parenting, unlike, well, maybe like many things in life, but in terms of intellect and IQ and test scores and things like that, parenting is almost 100% effort. The smartest, most well-read lazy parent in the world is is useless to a kid and the the kid and the parent that is the least educated and the least informed and the least evolved who's 100% effort like you know you want as a as a parent you want Rudy as as your kid <laughs> or as your parent as a yeah. kid you want Rudy um you don't want Terrell Owens. Uh, they could be gifted, but they're kind of about themselves. You want the effort. You want yeah. the effort. It's all effort. If you think about it, first off, no matter how dumb you are, Chris, mm-hmm. and you are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> and and nobody champions your stupidity like I do. <laughs> it's true, too. I've not met a two-year-old you're not smarter than. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So what, what I'm saying is, It doesn't matter how dumb you are. You're always going to be smarter than your kid until your kid hits like 11 or 12. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's all effort. It's all 
it's all it if you think about it it's like cooking stuff you know and i'll just span this through planning a party you know going out to the garage and making a go-kart with the kid or packing the lunch or helping them with whatever for cocktail school project or whatever it's all effort it, it has nothing to do with dexterity or intellect it's really just effort mm-hmm. and then all the shit parents are the non-effort parents yeah and the kids will always discuss the effort you know, my dad have come home. Yeah, we lived in a big house, but he was in his office because he's trading stocks and he's trading stocks on the Nikkei. And Japan is 12 hours time difference. So he'd have to be up at two in the morning. And he never even saw me off. Like when I'd leave for school, he wouldn't even look up from his computer. Like all that. Yeah. It's all effort. That's all kids see. It's efforts. Effort. Right. Every time you talk to a black athlete who buys their mom a house, she worked three jobs. We didn't have any money, but we we damn sure made sure that our shirts were pressed. She made sure that we had food in our stomach. You know, it was effort, effort, effort. Every story is about effort. Yeah, no, that's that, exactly like you don't. They don't go. Oh, my dad had the IQ of whatever. No, it's hey, my dad worked these jobs, or he, uh, yeah, he he basically tried very hard. Show up. He showed yeah, up. well, he was there. if they do speak about IQ and brains, it'll quickly. Go back to effort. Like they'll go, my dad was a Mensa member, had 161 IQ, but he couldn't figure out the equation of hugging his son. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? See, it'll circle back. Exactly. So, as yeah. a matter of fact, if someone starts telling you about how smart their dad is, leave. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it's about it's, 20 seconds from tears. This is dad be a was downer. a chess champion and he right. never had the chance to right. teach me how to play. Right, right. Oh, right. Damn. You don't want that. So it's all effort. It's all effort, yeah. So I'm definitely... Which you may be in a deficit to <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, sure. I didn't really want to yeah, harsh ins- your mouth, but uh, right up there with the intellect is the effort problem. Oh, but boy. yeah, to just uh, put your effort... All, all, and all they want is effort because all you do is sit around and do nonsense with them. You know, peek a yeah. smelly foot, smelly foot. Smelly foot, foot. I can't wait. Oh, uh. I got, Sm- smelly foot's the best. <laughs> I got to clear that up really quick because my dad was a high school chess champion. Oh, God, here we and go. And he did teach me how to play chess. Uh-huh. So anybody who may know that, no, he did teach <laughs> me how to play. Smelly foot is great. Um, smelly foot is fun because you have to evolve your smelly foot game. You can't just keep going back to the foot and going, ooh, smelly, dinky foot, dinky foot, right. dinky foot. You got to change it up. You got to change it up. And... I remember, I don't know, Natalia was just developed faster than Sonny or had sort of a better sense of humor or something something like that. And Natalia, I could, the smelly foot would evolve into me, a stinky foot. It would be smell her foot. And then at some point I'd go, hmm, nothing. I don't know, what'd you do? Take a breath. Oh, stinky foot, stinky foot. But she would be waiting for it. Yeah. Know? Sonny would just start laughing immediately because I smelled his foot. You had to really earn it with her. He, he didn't wait. He didn't know the nuances of dad and stinky foot. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to do all that. Like, it, yeah. I mean, the days have just flown by. Like, I've been out for uh, almost two weeks, and it's just crazy how it feels like we've done nothing i've just done nothing but change his diaper and hold him but the days are just flying and it's it's pretty incredible yeah yeah stinky foot's good you do start real you're gonna start realizing how bad all children's books are and how bad all children's tv is you're gonna start realizing what what weak sauce all that is and then uh, the one i always kind of drilled down on was uh this little piggy which is like nonsensical to me. Like I had to really go look up this right, little I piggy. This is a big yeah, well, part of the radio show. Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of like what <laughs> I'm trying to make it, so. trying to make heads or tails of this little piggy. Well, first thing about this little piggy, I don't get, but I I feel this way. You know, certain comedians have like like uh, catchphrases. You know what I mean. Oh, get get her, her done, done or something like that. But if I'm sitting in the room and you're like pitching that to me, I'd go, yeah, not funny. Like, don't do that. Or if you do it, don't do it every time. Like, it's not any good. Like, mm-hmm. No one wants to hear that over and over again. I'd be bad at that. But but I'd be bad sitting in and uh, kiss his band meeting when they're pitching lick it up. I'd just be mm-hmm. like, that's 
bad. Yeah. That's it kind horrible. of how all these group projects. You're 44 yeah. years old, dude. What are you talking about licking up? <laughs> but, but this little piggy went to the market. It went to market. Oh, to market. To, to the market means something entirely different. It does? Yeah. To market means you're going to get slaughtered and sold. Oh, yeah. well, there market. you go. He went to market. Yeah. Oh, well, now. Oh, because you were thinking the pig was getting in his car yeah, with his, his reusable grocery bags in the trunk and well, heading over the Whole Foods. Well, to be fair to me, maybe it got softened up a little bit over the years because we don't want to think about him going to the Hormel plant with Tom Arnold in 1979. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this little piggy went to market. Yes. Going to get slaughtered. Yes. All right. It makes a little more sense. Sad, but... This little piggy went home. Stayed home. Stayed home. That's okay. the lucky little piggy. Didn't get to go. Yeah. Yeah. This little piggy had roast beef. Is that this, right, Dawson? That's yeah. correct. This little piggy had none. That is also correct. Not interesting. Not fascinating. Not a real turn of phrase. Maybe one of the pigs was a little more aggressive at the trough because pigs just eat leftover trash. Yeah, but why roast, roast beef, beef, though? though. I don't know. Maybe it was... It's syllable. to Maybe fatten it was... up the pig. Uh, they're not ready for market yet. There you go. Oh, and to this little pig had pig. none, and this little piggy went wee, 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 all the way home. But where so, was he? Yeah, so now there are two pigs at home. Yeah, just Did one he, cried on the way. Right. Did he leave the market? Uh, Which piggy was it that went true. all the way home? Who knows? See, I'm going to have to answer these questions and, for well, baby yeah. Bennett. Aren't you supposed to count these on your baby's toes? Yeah. And then you grab the little one, wee, 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 all the way home. And so by the way, Chris. That's stinky foot. It's, it's a rip cord. Congratulations on now you have the number one excuse for not to do anything ever again. With yeah. any of your friends. Something with Congratulations. your kids. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't blame the kid. You blame your no. wife. Yeah. Who doesn't want you to leave, <laughs> although she doesn't care. Mm. Or it's that time to point out, you know, I'm just I'm just too good a dad, man. I'm sorry. Making the effort. That's true. Yeah. Sorry, I got to put in the effort. Without the intellect. All right. <laughs> Morgan J. Oh, before we go before oh, we yes. go to break, I just wanted to thank uh, all the staff here, all the production team. I mean, the show's without me. I listen to all of them. They went off without a hitch, so good job, you guys. And also, all of your listeners, Adam, a lot of them have reached out on social media, uh, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram. Um, people found my registry and sent me stuff. Like, they've been so supportive. And I just want to say thanks to your audience for being so nice and uh, and supportive of, of, of this. Well, it's thanks, really audience. Yeah. Appreciate the family. Anyway, musician, comedian, Morgan J is going to be in studio right after this. The Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, The Jordan Harbinger Show. Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts and interesting people, you should definitely check this one out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter anymore. Man, is he right? Or you go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy. We've had him on uh, many times. I know the man well, and he's worth a listen. We enjoy the show, and we know you will too. So you can search The Jordan Harbinger Show. That is H A R B as in boy, I N as in Nancy, G E R, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Let me tell you about Turo Innovative. It's the world's largest car sharing marketplace with Turo. You can book any car you want, wherever you want, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. Book an SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget your boring rental cars at Taro. T U R O dot com. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Adam. Uh, the other day you said uh, Bert was a uh, like a manly name. Yeah, I'll agree with you if it's like B U R T is in Bert Reynolds. Then I'm going to have to disagree with you if it's uh, Bert. As in Bert and Ernie, B E R T. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888 634 1744. 
comedian Morgan Jason yes. Studios got a special out live at the Village. It'll yeah. uh, premiere on YouTube coming up uh, soon, May thirty first, and it's got original <clears throat> songs and comedy on it. Live dates everywhere, yes. and you can go to uh, morganj.com for all the live dates. Good to see you again, Morgan. Hey, good to see you too. Thanks for having me. This is this is fun. This is my first uh, like. I don't know, it's like my first like big like little like little press thing, you know, promoting something. Little for the... press thing. I mean, I don't know. It's not little, but I'm just saying like I have this is my first time, and also it's like very cool to be here because I, it's really funny because I was watching the Man Show like in 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 middle school, which I probably shouldn't have been watching it, but mm. it's very cool. And we've done some shows together now, and uh, I really appreciate you having me, and this is really great. So well, thank thanks you. for coming, and thanks yeah. for bringing your guitar. Yeah. Yes. I want to. I had a little predicament yesterday, okay. and um, I chronicled it. I filmed it. What, okay, yeah. And, but I want to know your take on it. I'd love to. I'd love to take a look. So I, I'm really having a lot of trouble these days figuring out if people are being malicious or they're just kind of out of it. Mm, you know, okay, and, okay. It, and it, it's sort of. I like to say stupid or liar works oftentimes with like politicians. Like, is yeah. this person lying or are they just stupid? Like, right. what are they? They're saying something that's clearly wrong. Yeah. But are, is it because they're dumb or because they're lying? But you tell me if this is a innocent mistake or, or it's malicious. It's okay. A message. Now, okay. I'll, I'll set the table for you. Okay. Okay. We're going to be looking over here. We yeah, will be. Oh, right, but right, I don't want right. to make this about me. Okay. I'll make it about you. <laughs> okay. It's just, I got to get it off my chest because it happened to, <laughs> me, right. happened to me last night. Okay. Uh, I live part-time in a condominium in Malibu. Okay. There is a maid that shows up every two weeks. Not scheduled by me. Okay. She's just random they, there. And I do not know what days the maid is there. Okay. It's not a consistent schedule. If it is, I'm unaware of it, but it's every... <laughs> couple of weeks all right okay now the maid likes to finish off cleaning the shower with the handheld sprayer mm -hmm. there's the shower head yeah and then there's push the button in and you do mm -hmm. the handheld yeah. Yeah. the wand well i i would argue no one needs the wand that, that's for masturbating in the tub that's not for dudes so what? i need the wand what yeah. uh <laughs> Yeah. No, that's for ladies. Okay. Ladies like the wand. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is, is have you ever been standing under like a big rain shower head and went not enough water to get my ass clean? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, right. I feel like that's enough. Yeah. yeah. The wand is there, but it's, I would chalk that up to like the heated towel bar. Yeah. Like, has anyone ever got out of the shower and put a towel on and went like, oh, yeah. the humanity. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. no, it's, it, it, you don't need it, yeah. but. I, I would rather be hands free during my showers. Have I don't you seen those very do. expensive showers that have like the the, the oh, shower last heads? Few, right. like the Swiss showers. There's like, there's like eight shower heads. And yes. it's, it feels like a car wash when you yeah. walk in. Yeah. It blasts you yeah. from all yeah. different directions. Yeah. It's a Bukkake of like, shower. It's a yeah. shower. Yeah, it's a it's, thirty second shower. It's I don't know if that's its official title. Yeah, um, but I would argue all unnecessary because the shower is really not broken, yeah. but. Thus, the hand wand sprayer exists. Okay. And really what the hand wand sprayer is for is it's not to clean your ass. It's whoever you pay to clean your shower who comes in and uses it uh. like a guy, like a gardener in the driveway hosing, hosing something down. It's a utility yeah. piece. It's now. a utility yeah. piece to clean the shower bay. Yeah. But what she does is she pushes the button in, uses it, and then leaves it. And then leaves it. Mm. But doesn't just leave it. She directs it. Mm. So that the business end of it is facing the shower door. And then at some point, a weary Adam Carolla, yeah. who knows not what goes on, decides he's going to take a shower that night, opens the door, leans in. Turns the shower on to preheat the water and is shot in the face by a high. Mm. And by the way, I'm oftentimes dressed when I do this. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm wearing glasses yeah, and a long sleeve a shirt. Bit. I just want to crank it up for a mm. minute before I get undressed and get in. I get the blast. Now, people would say that's a mistake, but there are many different directions that hand sprayer could be yeah. going. And yeah. it's always dead nuts at the door. It's a big bay. 
Could be going straight ahead, in which case it would harmlessly just hit a tile wall behind it. Yeah. So I got home yesterday <laughs> to the condo in Malibu, and I walked in, and I went, I smell cleaning fluid. Mm. And something evil this way comes. Yeah. And now I'm prepared because I've been blasted three times already that when I smell Clorox, right. I'm like, this mm. bitch has set a Burmese tiger trap for me in my own shower. So I walked up at night before I took the shower. And Chris, I, you know this, and I hope the audience knows this. And Morgan, you're going to find this. I did not cook anything. I did not touch anything. All I knew is that the maid was probably there today mm. because I smelled smell something. Oh, That's all I strong. knew. That's all I knew. Yeah. So I walked up in my bathrobe and I started rolling on myself. Saying, Filming himself. Yeah. I'm just going to turn this on and we'll see what happens. I don't know oh what God. way so things are facing. There's no pre-production. There's no meetings. I'm just going to turn the handle on like I'm getting into the shower and we're going to see what happens. One, Yeah, no cuts here. Mm. No cuts, <laughs> no pre-checks, okay. no staging. All this right. is just me in my bathroom. She likes to play a little trick on me. Everyone thinks I'm nuts. But she cleans the shower out with the <laughs> hand sprayer. <laughs> and let's see if she did what she normally does to me. Oh, oh I already we're seeing see it. it right at you. I already see it. I like to heat up the water. I already see it. So I like to lean in, turn it on, heat it up, and then get into the shower. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna lean in, and I'm just gonna turn the handle on. Oh. <laughs> Sprayed right in the face. This is a jump scare. <clears throat> right into the lens. Your camera's going right in the mirror. It's yeah. your camera's wet. Mm. I'm wet. My camera's wet. Yeah. You see this? The yeah. reason the wand we'll setting, the reason it's at the very top is because I slid it all the way up, hoping she couldn't reach that high. Oh, she, mm. Not she only did. can she reach it, she can aim it. Oh, you tried it again. You need a <laughs> second attempt. Look at my face. <laughs> your glasses it's the face need of a man who's not covered not with happy. water. Not happy about it. Oh. Covered with water and the phone is covered with water. It is facing the open door. That's sus. And by the way, the opening spray of a shower is the coldest it could possibly be. In the be. fucking yeah. face. Yeah. But, and this will be on our YouTube page, everybody. So I'll watch the show on YouTube. She points the nozzle uh. at the door. <laughs> That's an attack. No, this, every time. This is every on, time. It sprays me yeah. in the face. And then everyone tells me it's my problem. Oh, that's the best God. part. Yeah. I tell people, what is this witch doing? They go, yeah, it's on you, dude. But you never no, see I, her, huh? It's just she does it and she disappears. Huh? You never see her. Like a thief in the night. Mm. She's a phantom. She blows in like I, the wind. She rigs the shower. I don't even know if she cleans. Yeah. I think she just rigs up the shower and leaves. <laughs> I, I, I want, I'd be curious to know whether, because sometimes I put these things down and you put it the right way, but they just like... Through this, the force of gravity, it might turn. I do think it is malicious. I do think Good. it's it's Good. intentional. Good. I do Good. think, um, you know, obviously she doesn't see what you go through. Um, but I make this argument a lot to my friends yeah. in the black community. If I was black, I'd be like, this bitch is a racist. Right. She's fucking racist. Mm. There's no other explanation for mm. her pointing the thing right at the door and making sure the button's in every time. There's yeah. no other. It's racism. Okay, yeah. What would be the other explanation for this? Why wouldn't it be facing another direction at some point? Mm. Could be facing the tub or straight ahead. You got 180 degrees to play with. Look, you know, I'll be honest with you. My mom, my mom's Brazilian. She used to clean houses, and I, that never, you know, I don't think that ever we ever had any. That ever happened. You know what I mean? And I, and, and as a matter of fact, I would have to clean the shower, and I would use like a little bucket, a little piece of Tupperware to clean the shower. I don't, we never, I, we didn't have these sprays. Oh. I am convinced that you know? at some point I'm going to be emptying the trash, and a piece of paper is going to fall out with some coordinates on it, <laughs> and like a straight line, and it's going to be an outline yeah. of me. Six. She's going to home alone. She's going to home alone. You. She's yeah, 
like, booby trap like, the whole place. He's six two. <laughs> his eyeballs would be at about five eleven and a half. Then she's gonna account for wind yeah. and the curvature of the earth. <laughs> yeah. You know, a bunch of coordinates yeah. and like a compass and stuff. She's doing it she's on a purpose. Sniper, yeah. yeah, yeah, effective. Interesting. Or, but if we go the other route, I do think it's malicious. But the other thing is, she could be very exhausted. <laughs> You know, and just not thinking. She's all maybe she's tired too, and she just puts it in there. She doesn't think, and she's only there every two weeks. You know, mm. she might clean a lot of houses, and they just have a different. Mm. But I, I personally, she probably hates you a lot. Mm-hmm. She probably completely hates you. You would go with your mom to clean the houses? No, uh, no. But I did grow up in a very affluent town in Jersey, and my mom is British. She was an immigrant, and so like, she would be cleaning houses of kids that I went to school with. Oh man! So you know. Things like that. As yeah. a, you know, I, I, I that's remember... Like, that's like the pool guy or something. Hey, yeah. that's my pool guy. Yeah, but I remember one time she... She was also a caretaker. She was taking care of these two older people. And one of them, she couldn't... Like, I had to go there. I was probably like 13 or 14. And she was like, listen, I'm like too busy. Can you put this old man to bed? Wow. So 13, I and you know, he was like probably mid to late 80s, peeing on himself. Like the whole place smelled like pee, you know. And I had to like... I like dress this old man, and, but and put him to bed. I put him in like paja- helped him. Did into you do pajamas. The, this little piggy went to market? <laughs> I him. said I read him a you know the the moon book with the you know, cow moon. jumps the, over the, the moon. Cow jumps over. No, but he was uh, what an interesting character. He was like a plumbing tycoon or something. And mm. uh, your mom, your mom's a good example of. If you come to this country and you want to work, you shall find work. I, and you can be cleaning, you can be taking care of old people, you can be cleaning old people. But if you want to yeah. work, there is work. Oh, she was working three jobs. She was working at a restaurant, taking care of people, and then cleaning and like catering, doing everything. And what was your dad doing? So my dad, uh, you know, he died when I was six, but he was a. Uh, uh, well, that's what that's the reason why she had to, she like started working so much. She All was right. working, but she died when he died when I was six. But he was a pop star in Argentina. But then when he moved to America. He became a chef, and he became known mm. as the singing mm. chef. Mm. And so he would be in New York. You'd, you'd go and have a meal. He'd cook you a really good meal, and then he'd come out and sing you songs. Oh, man. What? And he sang for, like, Robert De Niro, Anthony Quinn, Richard Nixon. Like, I have this old guitar from him with all these, like, signatures of all these famous people he sang for. Wow. Very cool. So, um, so yeah. Man, and sad then, that he went so early. I know about uh, uh, colon cancer. So Jesus, you know, get yourself checked out. Yes. I, th- I think I'm 36, and I think I'm gonna get one in like four years. I think I'm gonna do that. Did um, yeah. because a dad, the two things that you want your dad to be able to do is cook and sing, and now <laughs> exactly. he's gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean when, you when you're that young, way, you're like damn. Could have had dad in there making you a Denver omelet and belting out a tune. Well, he did. I do remember, <clears throat> you know, instances of him singing like, you know, like the Barney song or La Bamba or things like that. Uh, and then, but he taught my mom how to cook and she took care of us. You know, she, she did like everything. She, we never went through life thinking we had like less, you know, cause we did piano lessons, tennis lessons. I mean, we did everything. Cause she worked three jobs. Cause she worked three jobs. You what know? I say, yeah, so you effort. That's effort. Yeah. Mom, yeah. That's probably not a genius, but effort, <laughs> effort, she worked everybody. Her ass off. She still <laughs> works her ass off. So, you know. Well, this and it's also one of my arguments I get into with everyone on the left, which is these people can't afford to be, make their kids lunch. Like they can if they put the effort in. Right. You just put the effort in. Just burn the fucking. I mean, powers. there are there are sacrifices that go into that though. It's like you know you're going to spend a lot less time with your children. You know, mm. if you're working three jobs. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, working three jobs means you're poor. But if you have five jobs, you're rich. <laughs> like Mark Garagos has fifteen jobs. He's rich. It's not a straight scale. Right. That's, you yeah. have two jobs. And you have one job, you make more money than two jobs. If you have three jobs, you make less money than two jobs. But if you have 15 jobs, you make more money than someone with two jobs. Yeah. I think three and five is the magic. But you also ratio. see those, yeah, you yeah. see those like, you know, billionaire tycoons too. I feel like they don't spend any time with their kids either. I don't know. I feel like they're probably just like working nonstop also. You know, because once you have a billion, do you need, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're probably working, I'd imagine, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Well. Like, you're like trading stocks and just constantly on the phone having meetings. Yeah, I might be like wrong the, about that's that. That's like the cliche, right? Like, yeah, right? dad just goes to work and doesn't come back for a long time. Well, also, yeah. 
we're I mean, are we watching Succession? I don't know. I mean, that, that might that might be it. <laughs> but you know, we're working under the presumption that your kids would ra- rather spend quality time with you than all the shit your work gets them. Mm. So if you said to my kids, would you rather spend some quality time with your dad in a smallish apartment in Van Eyes mm. with no plasma TV and no trips here and there and no big cars and big houses or whatever they'd go, yeah. we'd rather him be on the road and sit in the big house. Mm. Yeah, interesting. So they don't really discuss that part of it. Kids, yeah. when they live in 7,300 square feet and they have wall-to-wall air conditioning and big pan and a movie theater in their house, they don't miss dad as much. Well, let, let me ask you, you just became a dad, right? I'm seeing yeah. all the blue around you. have a baby boy. Yeah, thanks. So, so you're, from a parent's point of view, how old is your baby now? He is uh, 12 days. 12, holy Chicago. Okay, so 12 <laughs> days. Now, as your kid gets older, do you think you're going to want to, would you rather be working a lot to give them the best life? but you have less time with them or would you rather be spending as much time with them as you can? You know, I am, I do think about this and it's, it's hard to, I, I, it, the answer is just whatever, whatever's best for him. Like, I don't really know, but I'll do whatever. I'll do either one. Mm. If, uh, you know, if it's, if it's good with him, like, I don't, I don't know. Like it, it, Obviously, for selfishly, gonna... <laughs> I would love to spend as much time as I sure. want with them. But... Now, listen, leave the house and work. Yeah. Because <laughs> your kids so the other part is, is you don't see your kids as much because you're gone all the time and everyone thinks that's a negative. But as we've just heard, you, they will spin yarns of you being dedicated. Like you, you'll true. get the, my yeah. mom wasn't around that much, but she worked three and jobs I, and she took care of it. You'll uh, get a lot of that. But also, you know, it informs my work ethic too. Cause I, mm-hmm. I work, I feel like I work my ass off and I was working several jobs. Like during, in college, I had a job. Uh, out of college, I had several jobs and just like, I mean, I didn't really have much of a social life when I was started doing, I don't know about what it was like for you starting, co- like when you're doing comedy, but like, you know, go to work, then I was in New York, then go to an open mic, get home at like 1am to open mic. And I just was like, you know, say, just, say no to parties and just weddings grinding. and just grinding. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do think that when money is tight and you really are working all day, it's much easier to to focus, I shouldn't say easier, but you're much more apt to focus on your shit. And what I'm saying is, is, and they have studies, you know, obviously kids that work hard and put themselves to college through college, don't miss many days. They're paying for it. Right. Right. You know, the kids that the trust fund babies and daddy's paying for it or whatever, they'll never show up at a class before noon. And, and I felt the same way when I was working construction and I'm taking a groundlings class on a Saturday, I would never miss it because that's all the money I had. And there's no, if somebody was sponsoring me or underwriting this whole thing, I would have probably missed quite a few Saturdays groundlings classes. I I was at NYU and that's what it was like. It was like, there was two types of students at that school. Like, cause Friday there'd be no class Thursday night. The the really rich people be going out to the clubs doing Coke. And then I'd be like working or, or working on something, you know what I mean? Or going to an open mic, you know what I mean? So uh, I think there is some truth to that. You know? Yeah, the work yeah. ethic. But getting back to the overall gestalt of today's show, it's just effort, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Everyone wants to talk about talent and who you know and who's your dad and all that. It's really, this country is cut out for effort. Right. Put the effort in on your kid, put the effort in on your career, you'll mm-hmm. land on your feet. Speaking of uh, effort, I know you brought your guitar. Oh yeah, in. yeah, yeah. I got my guitar here. And uh, you know, I, I didn't start out. I didn't start out doing the musical comedy. You know. Oh, there's a little ledge here. Okay. You were serious. I was, I was, as a I was, <laughs> no, no, I was doing stand up for like six years, and it was it was going well. Oh, see, I thought because of your dad being a crooner that mm-hmm. that was where you started. No, no, I so I did music. I was playing piano for a while, and then I was playing guitar. But I had I had started out doing stand-up. I was doing stand-up for six years, but I had a couple opportunities that fell through. I wasn't really having fun. And I just sort of like was always doing this. And I would fuck around with the, the, the guitar. And my friend was like, why don't you try that out? So, you know, that was almost 10 years ago. And then now we're what, two albums later, we're going to put the third album, third special out. We got my, you know, and I'm 16 years into doing this, you know what I mean? So we got the first like 30 city tour coming up and it's a different landscape now. Right, because everybody's putting their specials on YouTube instead of yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I can't wait to, to see yours. Now, 
The uh, with having the guitar as part of your act, like I mean, a lot of stand-ups will say, like, "Oh, we can't." Oh, they do that. hate it. We can't do that material again because uh, we burned through it in the special. But you could have like hit songs that people would want to hear. People again. People request songs at my shows, which is really cool. I feel yeah. it's, it's like doesn't that wouldn't happen with a joke? They wouldn't request your best joke. I mean, sometimes, rarely, right? right. They'll but, ask me for Chappelle's best joke when I do shows. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but uh, it, it does help out when like because like, at the moment I'm struggling to write new material, but. I could just fall back on these old songs and stuff like that. You yeah, know? you'll always have an act. Yeah, we'll always have an act, you know, and it can grow and change and stuff like that. So that is the benefit. I will say I, I did get a little pushback from comedy people. What do they say? Well, I mean, it's like when you see somebody with a guitar. It's it's always like, oh, you got the guitar, you can't write a, you can't write a joke. You can't write a joke. And it's like... Donald I Trump ar- said that about you? Yeah, you, get, you, you get, I would argue that it's almost... And also I'm improvising a lot on stage. I would argue that it's almost a little bit harder to like sing well play interact with the crowd like you're juggling a lot of things yeah you know what i mean but also it's also incredibly hard to make like a really good joke that's like intelligent and smart and funny and well i think i think for a lot of comedians who (laughs) comedians and baseball players Baseball players are always like, the hardest thing to do is to take a bat and put it on a round ball and it's like i'd say kicking a 56 year old yard field goal might be harder <laughs> than that because here's the way I feel about putting the round bat on the round ball, Mr. There's nothing yeah. more difficult than this. You let me get up to bat 1,500 times, I would get lucky yeah. and I, I would hit a liner through the yeah. middle yeah, at, some point, at some point. At some point. some baseball players are, are like fat. They're like literally yeah, out of weight. At some point, I would make contact with that ball and that ball would be put into play. Yeah. Um, you give me 1,500 shots at a 55-yard field goal, it's never gone through. Yeah. So anyway, or yeah. returning a punt to the house or skating through a bunch of traffic and putting the puck in the goal. Yeah. Not going to mm-hmm. happen. Doesn't matter how many opportunities. You give me, <laughs> but ever, I could hit a ball. Have you ever but, put hockey like like padding no, on? It's, from, exa- it's exhausting. I'm from North Hollywood. But they do <laughs> yeah. the same thing yeah. with comedy. They go, stand up, that's the hardest. Yeah. It's just you and the audience. Oh, hold on, let me write this down. If it's the, the hardest, why does every single person end up doing it? Like Stormy Daniels or <laughs> like like why is like this the last like I think John yeah. Cena's doing it? Like or some people are coming. Yeah, I know. It's like it, we I, attract the, I, the lowest it, I know. <laughs> but at least they don't try to pull that shit with DJing, you know, because right? Paris Hilton does it. But they go, it's the hardest thing. It's just you alone it's the purest form yeah, yeah. the purest form of comedy it's just you alone so when you show up with a guitar yeah. they go okay now yeah. it's not, not the purest a, form because yeah. now there's a guitar that's how Meanwhile, that's like, what the snobs one do. of the most famous musical comedians is like adam sandler <laughs> it's like that's one right, of the most yeah. famous entertainers in, in like in in hollywood ever you jimmy know fallon I mean? was a jimmy guitar fallon, comedian i mean it's you know yes jamie fox also he did piano with his act i mean yeah. I don't know if you have if you have these different skill sets. I don't I don't see why you shouldn't try do, using it. Yeah, I get it. You know? I, I, when you when you uh, go on the road, you you fly with your guitar. I have to fly. Is with that the guitar. worst? You know, some airlines are a little bit annoying about it. I remember one time I was on a flight with Lisa Loeb, and we both had our mm. guitars. Mm-hmm. And uh, you tell me that story. <laughs> yeah. So me and Lisa, no, so no, it's just it's always a thing, and like some airlines are different. You know, I always fly Delta, and usually they're pretty cool. I actually don't have a problem checking this at the door to the, of the plane. I don't have a problem. Oh, with it. gate check. Okay, yeah, because there's yeah. some people who are like, oh, no, this has to go overhead bin. I, 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 I think take it, the spot. I feel like they're cur- – I've never – it's never come back uh, broken. They've been better And I've been doing it. this for like three or four years. You could find a guitar in a pinch in just oh, about any Oh, and that's the other thing. Too, you know, if, right? I go to, yeah, if I go to a city and, I, and the guitar gets – I'll, I'll just get on their guitar. So I'm just going to assume that guitar doesn't mean that much to you. Well, you know, this guitar in particular – I don't know if you can see it, but the, this one in particular, like different places I've been to. So, oops, sorry. Mm-hmm. So I did like the Fringe Festival, uh, you know, Chicago. I went to Texas. Somebody said go to Bucky's. You guys know Bucky's? The Bucky's is like the gas. I got a station. lighter the, there. The, the, uh-huh. yeah, the, they, they sell. So jer- they you sell take jerky. all the patches and you've yeah. adhered them yeah, to the guitar. You know, that's cool. That's nice. Currently on that show, wild and out, and some of them are Velcro, so I could change it out if I go oh. to if, if I'm in like a certain city and I want to. Mm-hmm. I could just change it up. You know, yeah, they look like a NASCAR driver that gets a new sponsor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get a but, Snapple logo on there. But right. this this one is on every guitar because the first the heart. Guitar, yeah, this the first guitar I had was my dad's guitar, and he had a heart in his guitar, so I just, oh. I, I put these I put these on every guitar. Nice do that with dad's flugelhorn. <laughs> 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 All right, what do you got for us? 
I mean, I have a lot of songs, but I could sing the one that usually hits the most. I think for, in general, with every crowd, it kind of hits. You know, I, I have a hard time sharing a bed with somebody. And so, you, you, I'm assuming you have a partner that you yes. have a baby with. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Oh, geez, like eight years, nine yeah. years. Yeah. And, and uh, what size bed do you guys got? We have a king. You got king a king bed? Yeah. yeah. You got any animals or pets? No pets. Just, just, just the baby? Us. Yeah, just the baby. You guys, and when you guys share the bed, do you, you cuddle? You, oh, we cuddle, yeah. You do cuddle? Might as well have a twin the way we cuddle, yeah. All right. Yeah, see, I don't do that. I don't like sharing a bed with mm. someone. I don't know about you. Do you like sharing a bed with somebody? Myself. Does that count? That counts. Yeah, I. it's neither here nor there. I, I don't like sharing a bed because I feel like all I can do is mess it up. Yeah. I could fart. I could snore. I could snore. Exactly. I could have the, you know, I could have this coughing attack and be asked what was wrong. When you wake up, you know, you're like hawking, you know, like early in the morning. Then there's the weird, sometimes you have a little sneeze fit and the person mm -hmm. sees fit to say bless you after every, every sneeze and one. you feel bad for them. There should be a universal hand thing, like where you wave. There should be an umbrella or like a buffer, like a, like the well, next like, ten minutes, no. Like glasses. when you go to Foga de Chao and you just turn the coaster Ooh, over and it's like red. You should do people. that. You that's... should do that for sneezing. Like here we go, nobody. <laughs> I'm sneezing. Yeah. No one say shit. Well, that's what the song is about. It's about the reality. You know, maybe I'll sing the whole thing, but I'll sing a little bit. <laughs> Baby, oh, you put the sauce in it. Yeah. Get your cold ass feet off of me. Cause I'm trying to go to sleep If you wanna sleep together Stay on your side of the bed Cause you're breathing, you're breathing On the back of my neck It's super hot and gross It still kinda smells like dinner Did you brush your teeth? I'm trying to fucking go to sleep Why do you sweat so much? I'm trying to fucking go to bed you're hogging every inch of the blanket You just farted on my leg and I smell it Bitch, I got dreams of my own <laughs> Please stop snoring You just cut me with your toe I think that I'm bleeding It's a lot of blood what the fuck is going on on your toe? A pedicure's like $30, clean that shit up. I'm getting lightheaded, this is heavy flow. <laughs> We're gonna have to change the sheets. I'm trying to fucking go to sleep. I'm trying to fucking go to sleep. That's all I'll give you this song, a little fade out of it. Hey. That's a little sandler. <laughs> Live at the Village today. Live at the, the Village Special yeah. It's coming out on YouTube uh, May 31st So it's just around the corner, peeps yeah. Alright, we're going to take a break. break We'll do some news And we'll do that right after this Let me tell you about Angie Homeowners You know, it's a lot of work to own a home Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects It can be hard even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. And now Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, Largo, Florida. A 62-year-old woman used a 38 caliber handgun to shoot and kill her pet parrot. Definitely not a Jew.
All right, we'll do some news, and then Dr. Gary Marcus is going to join us, who's an expert on AI. So get your questions yeah. ready. Ooh. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He's founded two machine learning platforms, and uh, they both were acquired by Uber. He knows his way around this subject, so get ready. Yes. All right, Max Pat, what do you got? Well, I'm glad Morgan's here, because we were, we were following that Ed Sheeran case with him oh, yeah. versus uh, Marvin Gaye and, like, chord yeah. progressions and, mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. what is, like, uh, yeah, what is in copyright law and everything like that. Well, there's another uh, new ruling. Supreme Court has ruled against Andy Warhol mm. in a copyright dispute over a Prince portrait. Isn't he dead? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, it's his estate. <laughs> yeah, he is. Mm-hmm. Andy Warhol's estate. So if you put it up, so there's, a, there's this, uh, these silk screens created by Andy Warhol. And um, it was for, I believe, Vanity Fair. And so what happened was uh, there's this picture that was taken um, from a prominent photographer, uh, Lynn Goldsmith, before, kind of before Prince got famous. Mm-hmm. And she took it, and then eventually, um, and she took the picture, but then eventually Andy Warhol was uh, asked to do this, like, this silkscreen image for the magazine. So he found this uh, photograph that Lynn took, Paid her money, they gave her credit, made silkscreen, and made this art piece from it. Mm-hmm. But then they used it in the magazine. Mm-hmm. And now Lynn has sued Andy Warhol's estate saying, hey, that's my picture. You shouldn't be making a ton of money off of my picture. Right. And uh, so the Supreme Court ruled uh, seven to two. But that- she got paid and signed the release? She got paid, but <clears throat> um, but because uh, they share the the same purpose, which is a commercial use, mm-hmm. um, she she felt like she's entitled to more. Mm-hmm. So and um, and obviously Prince got really big after that and everything. So you and Justice Sonia Sotomayor, Mayor, mm-hmm. your favorite, may agree on this because oh, ju- that um, crazy bitch. Yeah, well, because she There's she 17, says seventeen thousand kids on respirators right now. <laughs> yes, yeah. She says that even the ruling was a narrow one. Um, that w- that other works by Warhol, or I mean, excuse me, that using like these images, other people's images, are basically sampling in the world of visual art. It's you should still be. Uh, you should I still get be it. Giving credit to the original. I'm yeah. I'm sort of with you. Uh, taking a picture is about the easiest form of art you can do. <laughs> you know, if you think about it. Ta- I, f- you, you, you know, oh, that you, you pass those billboards for like Apple and mm. there's like the most amazing photo in the world yeah. and it says under it, taken by a retarded 12 year old on, on his Apple iPhone, 7. Yeah. You know, you go, okay, now anyone can do this shit. Uh. Anyone can take it. Look, painting a bowl of fruit is difficult. Mm. Improvising a song about sleeping with a chick who farts and has uh, toe fungus is difficult. Doing a stand-up routine is difficult. Creating sculptures is difficult. Taking pictures, does that make you an artist? Mm. Because I fucking feel like we have way too much reverence for people. First off, you can't do it on your own. Mm. Like, whoever invented the camera, that's the true hero in this equation. Mm. The person that picks it up, you push a button. Right. That's your art. Like there's, there, remember there's a story a couple years ago where LeBron posted an image of him like on the court, and the photographer goes, "That's my picture." Oh, right. He's like, but it's a picture of me. Right. And yeah. it's me doing my thing. Like who? Yes. Who, who so owns who, it? Who owns it? It's the easiest mm. thing in the world. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't look at it as an art and, form. And they and they and she signed the release, right? Yeah, she was given credit. I mean, I don't know about the. And by the way, the release, I'm not a, but I'm she, not, she was paid for it. I don't yeah. like Prince, but this is all his work, because. If Prince looked like, mm, let's just say, let's try, let's try to think of a guy that is like sort of nondescript and, you know, let's just say Prince looked like a third base coach on a triple A baseball team, mm. you know, jowly <laughs> in his 60s, you know, heavy set, <laughs> the cap made his head even look bigger, you know, and yeah. you just took a picture of that guy, no one would praise you. Mm-hmm. This is all Prince. So this is this Prince should be the one that's that's sailing. Well, you made the editorial decision to do it in black and white. That's where the artistry mm, ended. Right. You didn't have enough money for color film. Sure. That that's your real crowning <laughs> achievement right. here. You wouldn't you wouldn't spring for oh. color film. Mm. Yeah. Here, so, here's my here's my question. Sure. Is there anyone you know that's in this building or outside this building that could not take this picture of Prince? Yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> 
I, can I don't. I, can... I don't hear you play your song and go, "Well, oh, give me that fucking guitar." <laughs> I'm sing about my girlfriend. Yeah. No, I just stand yeah. back. I go, "I couldn't do that." I literally, I feel like I could take my phone out and take a photo of that photo. That's right, and be better. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, so Goldsmith sued um, over this use of the 1981 photograph. Uh, what happened was uh, Vanity Fair used this used the Warhol illustration based on the photo in 1984 without any problems, but then. Goldsmith, the photographer, said she wasn't aware that Warhol had created other images that were not licensed, mm-hmm. and she became aware of that later. So, mm-hmm. Supreme Court ruled seven to two. All right. So what happens now? So she, she gets get paid. Money? Yeah, or? she's uh, yeah, she gets paid. Man, if you could tap into some of those Warhol bucks, that is. Uh, it's probably a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So she got it's originally she was paid uh, four hundred dollars yeah. for the rights to the black mm-hmm. and white photograph. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, mm. but then what about you know Campbell's soup cans and stuff? Right. Did they clear Did they, that? Right. Did they Marilyn Monroe like all the famous? Well, so so to stuff. so to Mayor says that the uh, the ruling, although a narrow one, she notes that even other works by Warhol, including the Campbell's soup cans, would be analyzed differently. While the mm. Prince images were used to illustrate a magazine story, which is the same purpose for the uh, photos that Goldsmith took, the soup can series quote uses Campbell's copyrighted work for an artistic commentary on consumerism. It's got to be a great relief for the Supreme Court justices when they're like, what are we doing Monday? Oh, God, I hope it's not a fucking abortion thing. I just can't fucking take it. There's people outside the house. My wife's freaked out. I got to decide when human life exists. Like, you know, that's a God type move. And they're Uh, like, no, no, we're we're doing the Warhol soup can thing. We're doing the Prince Warhol. God God damn. Thank God. Because there's no group that feels strongly about it one way or the other. There's not going to be any doxing going on. I'm a huge Prince fan. You're good. These are these are easy days. Yeah, this doesn't really hurt Prince fans at all. People it, who love Prince, they're just like, I'm going to just keep listening to his music. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Prince will be fine. Prince yeah. will land on his feet. He yeah. always does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So also in New York, there's a big story uh, about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Oh, oh I the, love the, these. Uh, I love them. Yeah, yeah with the paparazzi. Right? Yeah, they, the near- they said that they were, uh, they had a, a quote near catastrophic car chase. Uh, last Wednesday, as the uh, couple's detractors cast doubt on their claim, so um, so what happened? The state their statement was last night: the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Miss Ragland were involved in a near catastrophic car chase at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. Can, can I, let me explain: near catastrophic okay. in cars. That's like saying I was almost stung by a bee. Yeah. It's like, well, then you weren't. Yeah, you should shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah. Unless you I, flipped your car thirty times and it landed back on its. Like, if yeah. you went full Vin Diesel, yeah, and you just jump from one side of the bridge to the other after traveling one hundred and eighty feet in the air and stuck the landing, that's near catastrophic. Yeah, it's, but near catastrophic is like you're turning left. And some guy like doesn't see you and is like coming by and you start to lurch for and he doesn't slow down and you like you go, oh, shit, man, that guy almost hit me. And then you get the fuck on yeah. with your life. It could have been a catastrophe. If, if things don't make contact, then there's no yeah. catastrophe. Right. Yeah. If your state exactly the same as it was before the near incident, then yes. you're fine. Yes. So, oh, by the way, Miss Ragland, who I mentioned earlier, that's Megan's mom. So uh, the spokesperson continued saying this relentless pursuit lasting over two hours resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians, and two NYPD two officers. Hours. What were they driving to? New York's exactly. only eight miles long. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what they do. So um, they said because to, to get away from the paparazzi, what they typically do is they'll drive in circles for a couple hours to try to throw them off their scent of which hotel they're staying at and things like that. So that's mm-hmm. what they usually do when they leave events. They'll just drive around for a while to get them off the I thought they were tail. into the environment. Uh, you would think, yeah. I hope it's an electric car. You got a big V8 up there and a Denali, and you're <laughs> circling around for Escalade, two hours. Yeah, like it's Escalade. burning a lot of petrol. Yeah, yeah, well, so two senior law enforcement sources they said that uh, they left the venue at about 10 p.m. with private security. And uh, yeah, so they circled for a while. But when the couple left the precinct, they hopped in a taxi cab. However, the driver of that cab did not call what ensued a chase. Now, I saw him interviewed. Yeah, he, he said like, nothing. He said, I didn't think it was a chase. I never felt like it, I was in danger. It wasn't like a car chase in a movie. They were quiet and seemed scared. But it's New York. It's safe. And uh, it mm. lasts about 10 minutes, not two hours. Oh. Yeah. Now, they may have driven around before that, which they did. 
But look, here's the problem with the hyperbole victim I couple. Mean, didn't, didn't no one believes you anymore. That's the whole thing. You've, you, I, let's drill down on something here. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah, I scream it's... about this with Dr. Drew every day. Yeah. At the end of the day, all you have is your dignity and your credibility and mm. your word. That's all, that's all you have. Yeah. And you can become one of these people who's like perpetually late. Like oh, yeah. the perpetually late people. I call it social currency. Yeah. Ah. They, they come yeah. rolling in 40 minutes late like, oh, man, the traffic. And you're like, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. I had an appointment the other day. Um, I have never been one minute late to this appointment mm -hmm. ever. But there was incredible traffic. Gridlock. Closed off. Okay. And I texted the person. And I said, I'm missing my appointment. I'm literally sitting in gridlock. And she yeah. was like, I'm so sorry. I understand. Yeah. Because I'm never late. Yeah. Because I never miss an appointment. Yeah. But if I would missed every other whatever, then she'd be like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So your greatest fear in life is to have the, oh, fuck, right. Sure. Sure. Sure you are. And these two have a credibility issue because they're constantly talking about racism and being in fear and being attacked yes. and being chased and being whatever. So then they come out with a statement, which would be perfectly plausible if Ben Affleck said it because he doesn't have a rich history of bullshit lying and making himself a victim right. or yeah. any other celebrity who does not have the history Didn't of it like if tom up? hanks said that you'd go shit tom hanks was chased around for two hours yeah. these two say it and everyone goes yeah right yeah bullshit exactly see i hear that i hear your point the problem is is that the normal people are not being heard from because these two are buoyed by the media cbs news last night cbs news five o'clock opening story word for word verbatim their press release treating it as if that was the story yeah. and, and they death. did fucking right. 12 minutes on it these these two are buoyed by the media they're right. there's, yeah yeah they're so it, it, they're not suffering the consequences did, that did, they really should didn't prince charles his dad did like fake a an assassination assassination attempt like with some oh guy, really some guy ran on stage and there was like, a with, fake with, one with blanks. I think I think that's a real what thing. What year? This was like in the '80s or something. I I, I think it was. I, I maybe I'm wrong. I will have to look it up. But I I it could be wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, and also there's the the Princess Diana factor, right? I mean, are they leaning into that now? Just, oh yeah, they're doing just that, like my mom. We could have gone the same way. Then that's disgusting if they're using if they're using their, his mom. <laughs> well, your dad top to, speed in Manhattan would be 11 miles an hour. Diana was doing 95 <laughs> miles an yeah. hour. That's why she's dead. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, everyone hates them. They've lost their credibility. Fuck right off. All right. Yeah. We'll do. All right. Uh, so uh, there's a high school graduate. In, um, her name's Lena Black. She's an o o enrolled member of the Oto Missouri tribe. And um, she filed a lawsuit against her high school, mm. um, the Broken Arrow School District, which is a pretty sweet ass name. Yeah. Uh, for violating her rights to free exercise of religion and freedom of speech. What happened was she was graduating, and on, on her cap, she wore an eagle feather, a sacred eagle feather for her tribe. Mm -hmm. And right before uh, she went to go walk, they said, "Hey, you can't wear that feather." Really? And they and she's like, "But they said I could." And uh, the the employee said, "No, you can't wear it." And they took it off, damaging it. And this is a feather she's had since she was three years old. Mm. So now she is. <laughs> How'd they damage it? Like was one guy eating? Like she's eating a pretzel and they got mustard on it or something? Mm. How do you damage that eagle feather? I don't know, but she said it it was it was damaged after it was forcibly removed from her cap. And the lawsuit seeks at least fifty thousand dollars in compensation. Uh, compensatory damages and unspecified amount in punitive damages um this is uh yeah i believe in oklahoma and, i would have let know, her let her go what's the big deal yeah no I, i'll tell you the big deal look i did dancing with the stars they made a law passed they passed a law based on me performing on my unicycle they said no more props <laughs> right no more it's the adam carolla rule but <laughs> Me and my unicycle, that was magic. Yeah. <laughs> but 
if you let me, if you don't pass the rule, then you have jack offs on a pogo stick the That's next true. year, and then That's a guy true. up there with a kayak sliding down the stairs. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Next guy's got the he's got Slippery the thing. Slope. At, he's got the can of taffy with the snakes in it. He opens it, and they all spring uh, out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, guys throwing smoke bombs out there. Yeah. That's true. Where's it at? That's true. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go out riding on a llama. Eventually, they're not wearing a hat. Well, that's what it. That's yeah. where it goes. Yeah. So oh. this. So so they have Nip some rules. The, the rules: official school attire. Nothing can be added well, or adorned. I will say this: they did allow students to like wear other religious artifacts, like crosses and things like that, to for their religion. So. Well, but but nothing dangling from the uh, from the uh, cabeza. Yeah, that was for you and your mom. Yeah, yeah they eagle feathers <laughs> larger than I thought it'd be. Because here's what happens: all this shit. Next year, the guy goes. That bitch got to go off with an eagle. Man. I'm wearing my fucking MAGA hat. Oh, Why yeah. can't I wear my MAGA hat? And yeah. then you go, no, you can't wear your MAGA hat. Why? You let her? Is he yeah. representing do, her? Do you know, do you know in, J- in Japan there was a graduation? I saw this. Did you see this online where they let the students wear whatever they want at the graduation? People showed up in like full on like cat costume. This is at their graduation. Yeah. Oh, really? Full. You saw this? I you did saw, see this, yes. And just anything they wanted to wear, they could show up in it. Like yeah. dress as an alien or something. <laughs> I'd the, let her keep the feather but yeah. i do they will start arguing that other assholes are going to start hanging I, yeah. shit from their tassels i think there's an element of minimum wage gilded cage to this mm-hmm. oh. i think that the person who did this was hungry with power that he uh. or she really d- really did not have mm-hmm. and made this move to prove a point i can say that you have to do this well yeah. this this girl was humiliated suffered a panic attack as a, as a result of the incident <laughs> she's not ready for the real world oh, if this gave her a panic attack. Yeah, well, in, according to her, her statement, she suffered a panic attack as a result of the incident, but eventually walked across the graduation stage holding the eagle feather in hand and Perfect. accepted. Uh, she can keep walking until she yeah. gets to the closest Wendy's and take her position behind the fry machine. Oh. <laughs> Fuck it, everyone in their stupid pride. Fuck that. But Broken Arrow, that's a good school that's district. That's a good school district. Best Travolta movie ever made. Oh, Broken Arrow, that was <laughs> well, yeah. Christian Slater, right? Better than Face Off. Uh-oh. Oh, that's oh tough. no. It's Face Off. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Peak Travolta's Face Off. All right, but, but, but hold on. We can all agree that the best John Travolta is evil John Travolta, right? Yes. You know, Urban Cowboy or Grease or, you know, e- e- evil... John Travolta is the best John Travolta, right? Yeah, agree. And Battlefield Earth was it Earth? <laughs> yeah, Battlefield yeah. Earth. Right now, in in Face Off, he was only evil half the time. But you're proving your own yeah, point. You get both. You had an evil John Travolta who actually was Nick Cage. Mm. Hold on, let me write this <laughs> My brain down. spinning. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, evil John Travolta pain. was playing Nick Cage's character oh, in the other face. So he was wow. evil. You still get that evil John Travolta. Then but, you get Nick Cage as John Travolta. Yeah, but, but you know he's evil. But I get non-evil get, John Travolta. Uh, uh, you know, halfway. I, it's not not till the beginning of Act so, Two that yeah. I get evil John Travolta. That's true. There's a lot of levels, but, but there. broken le- broken arrow is all evil. John Travolta, all evil. Well, wow. see, variety is the spice he's not, of life. He's not technically he also evil. in Swordfish. No, um, yes, yeah. he's, so, in he's in Swordfish. Swordfish. Yeah. yeah, bad guy in Swordfish, isn't he? Yeah, I'm gonna have to rethink this. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, continue. That was a good movie. We have me on my unicycle, dancing with the stars. Oh, here it is. No, I haven't seen this. Oh yeah, there he is. They outlawed it. Right with the cape too. That's some drag. Yeah, <laughs> this is impressive. Honestly, <laughs> I, would, I would argue this is harder than doing an actual dance. Hey Adam, I got a new idea for your stand-up routine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got enough. We got enough of it. Now yeah. ask Adam how long it took for him to get voted off the island. How long right after it, that dance? How long did it take? Eight minutes, same day. <laughs> later that day. Later that day. Oh my god! Later that day. A lot of haters out time. there can't ride the unicycle. I know. Len couldn't ride the unicycle. Evidently, can you ride one right now if you if you needed to? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just like riding a unicycle. You never. <laughs> yeah. 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 You never forget. <clears throat> yeah. 
Uh, you can warm up a little. I mean, you can. I you, imagine. You give me a few days, I'll get back to form. But yeah, there's always somebody on a unicycle in Washington Square Park when I lived in New York. There's always somebody in there with a unicycle somewhere in New York. Well, don't bring it to Dancing with the Stars. That's right. Because because of me, no more props. Yeah, <laughs> you well, ruined it for said. everybody. Zero props. Yeah, that's yeah. why Carrot Top won't do the show anymore. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You want to keep going? Yeah. All right. Uh, in Montana, there's big news. So there's a new bill that was signed by Governor Greg Gianforte. He need banned TikTok in the whole state. Wow. Mm. TikTok is no longer allowed. You can't download it. You can't use it within state are v- lines. Are VPNs allowed? You know, I I imagine there are ways to get around it with yeah. VPNs, but as far as, as uh, the average user, mm. you can't use that it. That my yeah. whole career up. <laughs> they, the potential fines of up to $10,000 a day. Yeah, you use TikTok a lot. I mean, that changed my whole career. I've been, and then, you know, that changed everything for me. So yeah. the, the ban would affect me heavily. Yeah. You know, well, don't tour it's my like team 90, anymore. It's like 90% of my ticket sales is that. Really? Yeah. From TikTok? I swear to God, I show up to a city and and like not everybody came from TikTok. It's really? That, that Instagram. You know, and I have like TV credits and things like that and nobody knows the TV credits. They know the TikTok credit. I don't know if I've ever used TikTok. Yeah, it's an interesting app. You gotta be, it's a slippery slope. I say that. Are you worried about it? No, because there will be another app. There'll be, you know, there'll be Instagram. No, you worry about TikTok yeah, and like, Chinese and hacking into oh, your that, soul. I mean, I do think there is a level of, like, what we see in America is very different than what people see in China yes. on TikTok. So right. what we see is, like, a bunch of dumb, goofy shit. And what they see is, like, I don't know. In, I don't know, like just stuff that's not that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. smart, like intelligent, it's patriotic things. stuff that you know makes sense. I mean? And we have guys eating Tide Pods throwing and a, shit. Yeah, throwing a bagel against Chicks the wall, trying to catch yeah. hot dogs in their right. tits and stuff like that. Yeah. But the thing <laughs> is, and it shows you what you like, right? So, um, God, what was that? What was that? There was a senator during the TikTok hearing. He was like, "Why did? Why does a gay man like show up on my?" <laughs> for you funny. page and oh, it's really? like well it shows uh, you what you like my guy yeah, so, that's the wow. algorithm, so the algorithm you, it wouldn't <laughs> pop up if you weren't you know looking at that outed by the algorithm outed by the alg- algorithm you know Dr. Gary Marcus who's going to talk to us about AI probably has some TikTok thoughts well I have AI in my app now every, every show now in the new hour I'm going to be do, doing that what? oh you do so basically I just feel like I, we can't avoid it so now Every show, I, me and the audience, we write a song together with the AI. Oh, really? So I just take suggestions. We we beep, 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 we pop it in, and it spits out a song in like literally less than five seconds, and then we just sing it there first time. And, and you have how the lyrics is it? Up, you know. uh, I'd say I say it's all. It's never terrible, and it's never amazing. But I think the whole point for my act is incorporating the crowd and making a unique experience. So if we do a new song every show, then for them it's exciting, you know. But I don't feel like my job is threatened, to be honest with you. Not at least not yet. Well, you it's know? kind of interesting because at the beginning, five years ago, even people were talking about people being replaced, like truck drivers would be replaced, guys who flipped burgers would be replaced, cashiers would be replaced. There was all the talk was about sort of manual labor, blue collar replacement, yeah. self driving trucks and robots that flipped burgers and stuff like that, and it totally just shifted to AI. And now with AI, everyone goes, well, who's going to be safe with AI? Hey, roofers, plumbers, if you spread stucco, you're not going to get canned. And it's like, oh, we went from only blue collar guys were going to get replaced by robots and whatever to accountants and all white collar people. Hollywood is literally shutting down. Everybody's going on strike, right? Because they're worried about AI. And I think the number one job they said is going to be fine is like a short order cook. Yeah. I would I would argue Line that if, if you're a writer and you're worried about being replaced by AI, I feel like you're not that good at your job. And it'd be like, I'm a husband and I don't want to be replaced by a dildo. And you're going, well, then maybe you're not that good a lay. That's true. That's the way I think. <laughs> of it. But you can't say anything bad because you have to be in. <laughs> yeah, you have to be in lockstep with the writers. Yeah. yeah. Writers are some of the worst people I've ever met in my life. By the way. They're, they're, they're not salt of the earth people. They're some of the weakest, least talented people on the planet. So yeah. do not feel like you need to stand for writers, everyone. I know everyone 
turns writers But don't into, you notice like into, thing, it's like a noble job but yeah, you write on a shitty sitcom mm -hmm. how noble is that mm -hmm. but la the last writer strikes there were notable shows that got worse or canceled yeah. and things like that when when it was uh, all, all reality show i mean i i like uh what is that show? The Blo the Blossom show on HBO that they they came out? the White Lotus. Oh, I like yeah. the original Blossom. The, the sitcom. Yeah. Blossom. <laughs> Every writer's room has twelve people in it. Three of them are necessary. Uh -huh. The rest mm. could fucking not show up the next day, and you would not notice a difference in that show you're watching. <laughs> I'm looking I've for never that job somewhere room. between four and twelve. Yeah, so let me, let me yeah. be that dude. You be the dude. Don't be in the top three. Yeah, because the top three of the writer's room, like the guys that are good, you're like the dude when you're 22 who drives a pickup truck right. and your phone's ringing every weekend because you're helping some dude move. Yeah, that's you. Don't be in the top three. Don't be in the bottom four or five because you, you get your head chopped off. You be somewhere between four and seven, bring donuts. Nice. You'll never do any work. You'll never get fired. Be like, and no one will ask you to punch anything up because they know you're not that good. And then no one really has to ask if you're there. They just show up. They see the donuts and they're like, yeah. dude's here. <laughs> all right. We got Dr. Gary Marcus going to tell us all about AI. He <clears throat> wrote the book on it. And we'll do that right after this. Apartments.com helped millions of renters find their perfect places. And they're all different because none of us are the same. So why should our homes be? Apartments.com has the right tools to help you find the place that's uniquely perfect for you. Sort through and filter listings by amenities and don't miss out on their instant alert option. With over a million available units for rent, you'll find the place that's right for you. Whether you're looking for a place with a basement, a yard, or a pool, Apartments.com. That's Apartments.com, the place to find a place. It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. I could uh, eat a peach for hour. If you said face off, I can uh, eat a peach for hours. You're correct. Now, back to the show. All right, everyone's hanging out. Morgan's hanging out as well. Do chilling. Dr. Gary Marcus has now joined us from Vancouver. He's got a podcast out called Humans vs. Machines with Gary Marcus and a website, GaryMarcus.com. He's written books, he's researched, he has a lot of feelings about AI and everyone's talking about it. I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of agnostic about it, but I'm, I'm sure when we're done with this conversation, I'll have feelings. Good to meet you, doctor. Very nice to meet you. I'm actually in DC where I gave Senate testimony on, on Tuesday. So I oh, hail no. from Vancouver these days, but um, have been talking to a lot of uh, senators and congressmen and so forth. So what's your take on it versus, let's say, Elon Musk, who seems to be a little more fearful of it? I'm pretty concerned about it, too. I think Elon is mainly concerned about what we might call long-term risk, which is kind of like, could machines take over the planet? And I'm mostly worried about short-term risk, like could AI destroy democracy and lead to lots of cybercrime? But I think we need to worry about both. The reality that underlies both his fears and mine is that we don't have good control of the AI we're building now, and we don't really know how we're going to control the AI that we build in the future. When you, hey, can I ask you a question? When you say cybercrime, like what kind of cybercrime are we talking? I'm just really curious about that. Well, like a philosopher, Dan Dennett, just put out an article calling these new systems counterfeit people. They sound like people. Oh, I did hear about that. Yeah. And they can, for example, trick people into turning over their uh, credentials, like do phishing attacks. Um, people have already used them to like do fake kidnapping things and like <clears throat> imitate somebody's child and then get them to send money. Um, there's probably going to be people who use these tools to manipulate stock markets or other markets. Um, there are really a lot of possibilities for criminals. These new tools open up lots of positive things, like they help computer programmers program, but they also open up some negative things too. Yeah. I think it was chronicled in Face Off we were just talking about. <laughs> they had to change I their voice. That movie. Yeah, I've heard these eerie stories about 
kids, you know, using the kids' synthesized voice based on yeah, just hearing samples story, of it on TikTok or whatever and having them call the mom and say they've been abducted. It's really spooky. And, and it also kind of, le- first off, it puts everything in question. And then there's plausible deniability for everything. Yeah. Like you can go, oh. That's right. That's a problem, too. People are saying, oh, that's not, well, I think Elon's lawyers, in fact, said this about something, oh, that's not real, you know, that video isn't him. And um, this is happening in general. I was talking to a lawyer on on Friday, and it's becoming the standard. That's not really me. And most of the time, it really is the person. (laughs) Yeah, that's, but it's going to, but as long as there's sort of plausible deniability, as long as it's technically possible for you to say that wasn't a picture of me with my arm around that underage girl at the prince's party uh you can get away with it now uh also i think people are worried a lot about job replacement and we were talking before we were speaking to you doctor that uh people were talking about replacing truck drivers and short order cooks and now they're talking about it's accountants that are really going to get it and other white collar jobs yeah. I think um, voiceover actors are actually the people most immediate trouble. They, they are going to be replaced very <laughs> oh, quickly. Oh, really? Sorry, I just, that's not a joke. It's true. In a world where I can't yeah. find a fucking job. That's right. And this <laughs> mic damn. isn't plugged that's into crazy. anything. Yeah. Is that Sam Morrell there? That voice <laughs> that I recognize? Oh, it sounds like no. him. It sounds, it sounds like, like Sam Morrell, yeah. Comedian? He was just on. That's, yeah. that's actually yeah, what Kim Hume said. said. A while back, too. Yeah, funny. Huh. Wow. Um, well, thanks for listening, I guess, because he was just on. Um, so voiceover. Um, but, yeah, things like accounting. Like, I go, oh, that makes sense, because these people with all these papers and all this data yeah. entry and everything, like, that seems like... The- well, visual artists, not not fine artists who are really always trying to... De- develop something new but oh, he's kind of work work a day <laughs> right. commercial artists are, are also i think in trouble um <clears throat> because these things can you know make illustrations you just type in some text and you get a picture they're not perfect i think there's still some room but there's definitely going to be some impact on the employment market um in the short term and, and for sure in the long term are you philosophical about it in that when somebody came up with a harvester or cotton gin or printing press, you know, historically people went, that's going to put a lot of people out of work, but we moved on as a society and the people that would have worked in the fields got a job inside or, or a version of that was like, there's a version yeah, when they we have at- to be careful with history here. So it right. is true that we've always replaced jobs before. I mean, not the same job. So people who were, you know, with riding horses or maybe now driving cars. Um, but this is eventually going to be different. We don't know whether that's going to be five years from now or 50. I think it's more like 50 than five, because I think there's a lot of limits to current AI. Typically, can't do a whole human job like look what's happened with driverless cars we were promised that you know we wouldn't have to drive anymore and there there are no products we can't really use yet so there's also there's a long history of over promising in ai but the thing about it is you think about something like driverless cars maybe it takes 30 years to make them work right instead of five but when it does work right you can copy the software everywhere very quickly and suddenly put a whole profession out of work. So at some point, we're going to have to deal with that. I think it's further away, <coughs> excuse me, than a lot of people think, but sometime in the next century. Do you, that's do you think happen. the do you think the car will be able to have consciousness like Optimus Prime? Like, will it be able to think? And I hope not. I really hope that we will steer away from conscious AI. We don't want to have to think about like, does this system feel pain? Um, do we need to give it rights? Like, I think that makes the world a lot more um, complicated for us. And we don't really need to build conscious AI even to solve many problems we might want to solve with AI. So I would actually advise we steer, steer clear of that. Does it, does it seem like people are doing that, though? Like, do you think they're, they, or they want to do that? Yeah, some people are claiming that, that they are doing that. I think those people are mostly clueless. Um, but uh, there are people who wish that they could do that. I think it's ill-defined. We don't really know even what consciousness is. Um, we don't have a good measure, so we're not sure. Um, but there's always going to be people trying all kinds of things. Most of those people, I think, that are trying to do that now are kind of wacky. But yeah, have you seen these ads for these AI bots that are like pretend to be your girlfriend if you're lonely? Like you could just talk to it. Have you seen that? No ads. The, like I'm on TikTok ad. and I'm sure swiping. It's, oh, like a, it's, like a, it's like an electronic. Never been on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, look, I'm sure. 
And so here's a question or maybe two questions, but this one, first one is, first one's a little more standard. AI, at least from what I hear about it, it seems like is going to create a greater chasm between the haves and the have nots. Like there's going to be people that are profiting from AI and those people are going to be kajillionaires. And then there's going to be people that are out of work because of AI. And, you know, we always kind of talk about the vanishing middle class and about, you know, people had jobs, like postman and teacher and cop and all these kind of people. When I grew up in the 70s, sort of lived in the middle. Now it's like vast wealth. You know, Bezos just christened a 425 foot yacht, like vast unthinkable wealth and then Los Angeles is strewn with people living in the streets in their own filth. You, you know what I mean? Is you think AI is going to add to that chasm or might it bridge it to some degree? I don't think it's absolutely certain that it will add to that chasm, but I think we need to think about policy to make sure that that doesn't happen. And it is the most likely outcome. I think there is a world <coughs> that some people are excited about that they call like the world of abundance, where AI makes everything so cheap to manufacture that basically we don't even need money. Anybody can have what they want. Um, I don't think that's super likely. I don't think we can rule that out. I mean, like in Star Trek, nobody had money. That wasn't really the point. You found your meaning by that's exploring that's right. other planets or mm-hmm. whatever, um, and you didn't have to pay for your food. We could have a world like that. I think you know, the default given capitalism is that we're not going to wind up there. But, you know, we can think about things like universal basic income um, and, you know, ways of redistributing wealth. It is true that it might drive prices down. So nobody knows for sure. I think the likely outcome is that we will be driven to something like a universal basic income at some point. And we might do that in a kind of graceful way, or it might be, you know, riots on the street and French Revolution. Um, and it's really hard to know how it's all going to Here's a out. here's kind of a ethereal sort of philosophical question. When we grew up, um, at least the doctor and I, because we're close-ish to the same age, the world was very tangible, and you could have sort of held things in your hands, and you used change. You'd save a bucket of change and pay for things with like change, money, and stuff. Now everything's kind of digital and card swiping, and you can pay for whatever with your watch or or whatever it is. Yeah. I I I and and a lot of people spend a lot of time in their screens, sitting in front of TVs. You know, kids don't climb trees anymore; they play video games. I'm. I'm wondering if AI will get us further away from sort of the tangible into a sort of a nether world where like, we don't know if it exists. We don't know if it's true. We're just sort of in a digital world at this point that doesn't involve, you know, scraping your knee and making a fort. You know what I'm saying? I totally know what you're saying. I think we're already pushed pretty far into the yes. world that you describe. I don't know if it'll push it further, but it might. So like people are playing around a lot with software called Replica, which basically is like a virtual friend. And some people are pretty into it. People of our generation, I think, probably think that's silly. I'm not rushing out to do it, but there are people who do it. Um, as a psychologist, which is part of my training, I would say that if you do that a lot, you're missing out on the opportunity to have real friends that eventually you're probably going to suffer. But there are some people that for whatever reason can't meet other people. Um, you know, There's probably some value for some people in doing this. Um, it's not where I want my life to go, but you know, some people are going to do that. Now, Adam, so you, yeah. you talked about your generation. So Morgan, in my generation, all, all the jobs, that all the skills that a lot of our uh, colleagues were looking into, or friends were looking into, were was like coding. Coding was a yeah. huge thing with all my friends, but now that's being System taken over. Analysts, yeah, I, like think, I think job. coders are going to stick around for a yeah. while. So the re- reality is, this software can help coders, but coders, like if you're any good at all, you can debug. Right, you write your own code, you make mistakes, you track them down, you troubleshoot, and so all all good coders know how to do that. So they use these tools. These tools write lousy code, but people know how to fix it. And so they're okay. But if you took the coders out of the loop, the software by itself is not that smart. It's not that (coughs) reliable. I think we're going to have some problems where there's going to be like a couple years worth of crappy code written that isn't very stable. There's a technical term called technical debt. There's going to be a lot of technical debt as people write mediocre code over trusting these machines. And then someone at some point, it's all going to kind of fall apart. Um, and so I don't think coders are actually in that much trouble. We might reduce the number of coders, like 
there's so much work for coders right now that if you cut away 10% of the coding jobs, it's not really going to affect anything. They get paid so well, they'll, yeah. they'll still be fine. So what, so that, what, oh, sorry. So what skills but, should the next generation be focusing on that you'd think they'll be okay with? Like, like that's, that's a really hard question. And I say that as a father of an eight year old and a 10 year old, um, I would say the most important things are being able to think critically, to be able to reason, to be creative, and to be able to kind of go with the flow. I think jobs are going to change a lot. And so, you know, I think there was a time when people would get vocational training, like you're going to repair cars for the rest of your life. Um, that's actually a still a good one, by the way, because robots are not that good at their manual manipulation. So, so you're saying, like, if I ever go to a doctor, there's not going to be a robot giving me a prostate exam anytime soon? Not soon. I mean, I won't say never, but <laughs> yeah. Know, but it, learn learn a trade. Yeah. You'll you'll yeah. you'll well, never be out of work I, I if think, you learn a trade. I think the best thing to do is to learn to be creative, learn to solve problems, and that will always be a value. Yeah. How in speaking to Congress and. I turn on C-SPAN every once in a while, and all I see, I see old... Obviously, you didn't Tuesday morning. You missed oh, me. I, I should have said... You're right. It I was actually a pretty line. important hearing. You know, it was it was the first Senate hearing. Um, Sam Altman, who makes OpenAI, that makes ChatGPT, sat beside me. And we talked for three hours. It was actually pretty good bipartisan agreement that we need to regulate AI, <coughs> that we might need an new agency for AI. We might need a new international agency for AI, which is something I've been pushing. It was actually, a, I think it was a historic meeting. So you're confident that Congress can kind of wrap their hands around this? Well, I won't go that far. I, I will say <laughs> that, that um, you know, the people that were in the room, there were about 15 senators came and went during the day, all I think had a sense of intellectual humility that we didn't get the internet right that we don't really understand AI and that it's really important to get this right. And that was both the left and the right saying that. Um, and I was really heartened by that. It's still a long way from there to doing what I think is the right thing, which is setting up a national agency for AI, sort of like we have, not exactly like we have, but sort of like FDA, FTC, and so forth. And a lot of people in the room that wanted to do that, but then there are going to be arguments about who pays for it and what's the scope of it. And so there's a long way from having the right idea to actual execution, and we'll have to see how that goes. You know, it's funny when you were talking about this sort of virtual digital friend that we all that sounds so pathetic. Yeah. You know, your your sort of digital girlfriend or your digital mm -hmm. friend, or virtual friend. It's so funny. I was just, you know, first off, we've had things called dollies and like teddy bears That's and stuff right. like that. And I was thinking about, there was this commercial call for uh, digger the dog and you guys can find it, but it was a fake dog mm -hmm. that you dragged around on a leash and it just followed you around, but it was made of plastic. Yeah. And I thought that's pretty sad too, to walk your, Fake dog. Oh, pet rocks, didn't they? Yeah, pet <laughs> rocks. I was about to say pet rocks. Ours pet was rocks a Tamagotchi. Was Remember Tamagotchi? Tamagotchi? Like yeah. kids would, kids would Furbies? get guys over the Furbies? Tamagotchi. Oh, Furbies. 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 Yeah. Right. So but, I guess this isn't that uncommon. It's, it's not We've been that friends forever. It's not that new, but I'm, I'll ask the doctor this. If you got me Digger the dog in 1975, I would have dragged it around for a couple of weeks, but eventually right. I would have gotten interested in women. <laughs> yeah, and that dog yeah. would That's have been saying. out is, in the yard. Is there is there part of us that just we're just so impressed by AI, AI, AI right now, but it could lose its luster because I totally think that could happen. I think there's a bit of a fad right now. The stuff came out. I mean, researchers knew about it for a while, but it, it became really available to the general public in mid November, and people are having lots of fun with it. But it's also unreliable. It makes stuff up. Um, and like for some purposes, it's fine. Like it writes boilerplate text like that you need yeah. every day. You write a letter of recommendation. But, you know, it's not super reliable. It's not super trustworthy. And there's also like privacy issues. It could happen. And I don't know that people are just like, yeah, that was really fun. I was kind of amazed by it. But I'm not sure. Like you look at banks, for example, like JP Morgan, people there were excited. And then they're like, yeah, but this is not actually going to tell the customers the truth. We don't want to have, you know, tell a customer they have $4,000 in the bank and they actually have 3000 and they write angry letters and maybe sue us. And so, I mean, I'm guessing what they say, but it, what I know for a fact is JP Morgan um, has a ban on it right now. And it was presumably around things like reliability. So on the one hand, people might stop thinking it's quite so cute. 
And on the other hand, they might think it's not quite reliable enough. And on the third hand, they might worry about privacy issues. So I don't know if it will always be as popular as it is right now, but maybe it will. It's really hard to tell. Uh, we have the Digger the Dog commercial from 1975. Oh want to learn. Well, let's watch You're this. You'll learn one of the things I've, I've never, never heard. I've never, I never heard got. Of Digger oh, the Dog. yes, you have. That's slightly before my time. Uh, well, it could be Just 70. Ever so slightly. I mean, I was alive for that in <laughs> 78. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll recognize it. Let's see. Dig to the dog, dig to the dog, you explore. Just pull his leash and go for a walk. He's your dog for sure. What's your dog's name? Dig to the dog, dig and he goes with you. Must sound like the N word there. Just pull his leash and go for a walk. He's your dog for sure. Dig to the dog. So we had a fake dog to keep your kid friends. Why yeah. not have a robot? And when there wasn't anything to have, they would just make up one, have an imaginary friend, right? If you didn't, yeah. have a ro- if, you had, if you weren't lucky enough to have a rock or a fake dog, <laughs> lucky enough. You well, could. I, I think I think there's so there's the AI Armageddon people. I think uh, go to like nukes, right? They go, oh, AI is going to launch nukes on on us. AI is not going to launch nukes, but. Um, I mean, anybody who's sensible is not going to hook the AI straight up to the nukes. And um, from what I can tell around here, the people in Washington are sensible enough not to let that happen. But AI can trick people now, and it will just get better and better at that. And people could trick other people into launching nukes. There are actually a bunch of scenarios that I'm genuinely worried about. One I'm worried about most (laughs) is that use AI to cause all kinds of mayhem now if you're if you're a bad actor. And for example, if you wanted to manipulate the market, you might try to cause a lot of bad things to happen at once. And then people in the US could be like, if it happened in the US, could be like, oh no, the Russians have done all this cyber crime on us. Let's beat up on the Russians. And the Russians are like, what? And then like, you know, things escalate and go back and forth. Like you, you could have scenarios like that where some bad actor is trying to manipulate a market. And next thing you know, we get involved in a foolish war. And so there are some scenarios where even though I hope nobody's going to connect this stuff directly to nukes, they are kind of connecting it to the world, and that carries some risk with it. Yeah, is there, I just, just popped my head when I was thinking of like evil AI stuff, but if you generated images of a like white cop shooting a innocent black man in the back or something and put that out there, you could start, mass rioting and like all the big cities and that yeah. that kind of mayhem right yeah i mean there's some work now to do what they call watermarking so you can trace like what camera something came from so the idea of authenticating videos is, is something people like adobe um and microsoft and so forth are taking pretty seriously i think it's going to help some the first place it'll help with is like if the white house gives a statement they'll start using this technology and if there's a statement that looks like it's in the white house doesn't have that watermark we'll know <clears throat> but like these you know kind of street um videos it's, it's going to be a while before we have systematic control over, over those and for a few years we're going to see a lot of deep fakes and people will use them for political i think purposes. uh 60, 60 minutes just uh in one of their last stories they ended the show with this was created by a human. Like they signed off to clear up like this is, Oh, oh right. They, you know, you know what I'm talking about? They yeah, said, cause uh, a lot of times the when first, they use AI, they have to say, Oh, this yeah. is created by AI. So now they, for they the first say time ever, it was like for the first time in the, in the history of this, like this last, you know, bump out was created by, I'd <laughs> love to hear Andy Rooney do 10 minutes on AI. <laughs> I, I, I bet he could complain the right. shit out of it. AI. You ever wonder why AI is so irritating? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dead nuts on Andy Rooney. Um, so, yeah, so think- Mark, Mark Cuban today, he mm. tweeted about AI because he, he says that it makes dangerous people smart. <clears throat> but, oh. yeah, that's, that's, that's his worry about it. He does think that the benefits will outweigh the risks, but there will be unintended consequences. He's right mm. about the unintended consequences, which reminds me I owe him an email. Um, <laughs> we were having a little debate about this a month ago and I dropped it. Sorry, Mark. Um, uh, but he's right about the unintended consequences being a serious issue. I mean, you know, Jurassic Park was all, the movie and the book were all, all about unintended consequences. And there's that famous line about just because you scientists could doesn't mean you should. And there's a lot of that right now. We need to think through. We can make these technologies, but we don't yet really have a handle on what the risks are, how we're going to handle them. So for sure, there are benefits to be had, but we don't understand exactly how far we should go. And we don't yet understand how to completely mitigate those risks. So we do need some amount of caution. 
So on a one to 10 scale, uh, zero is I wish AI never showed up in my lifetime or my children's lifetime. And 10 is, is man, it's made my day so much better and my work so much and easier society and society so much better. Where do you think w we should be at with AI? I think we should be like very guardedly optimistic. Like there's potential here for AI to solve all kinds of cancer and Alzheimer's to actually make driverless cars work, which would be a benefit for a lot of people, you know, maybe eventually make them safer than people to make <laughs> elder care robots that, you know, take care of your grandparents and let them stay at home longer. There are all kinds of ways that AI could help us. And we should be guardedly optimistic that we can get there. But we should also say, look, it could go the other way. In fact, Senator Hawley, in his opening remarks on Tuesday, um, <clears throat> when I was in Washington, um, said, you know, the printing press was like one of the greatest technologies of all time. It really transformed the, the world for the better. Whereas the atomic bomb has really been a problem. Um, and, you know, a problem that we have not yet solved. We're still concerned about it. We want what's, AI what's to... Bad, what's, what's bad about that? What's bad about the atomic bomb? <laughs> about the atomic I'm bomb? Just <laughs> Uh, I keep thinking actually about this sign. It says, in the ca in ca this is an old joke. In case of um, nuclear war, it was an instruction manual. Um, do this, do that, like put away your this and that. And then it says, and then put your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, we still got some, some problems with the atomic bomb. So Holly's point is we want to make the future that is more like the printing press than the atomic bomb. And I think there's enormous positive potential, but there is risk. And I think this is why we need, for example, to build a new government agency um, that has its full-time job monitoring this technology as it's moving along very quickly, looking out for risks and saying, hey, you know, we need you, for example, to have something like an FDA model where you tell us the costs and the benefits before you roll out your technology to 100 million people rather than just <clears throat> letting the companies make all the rules. Well, I feel better about myself. That yeah. Josh Halley, that's the maniac who suggested men stay home and raise their families, though, so I don't know if I trust that cat. Dr. Gary Marcus, humans versus machines with Gary Marcus. If, if you talk to um, Mark Cuban, give him my love as right. well. And uh, I hope you check back with us from time to time and kind of give us updates because I feel a little better about AI after this conversation. My pleasure. And you can listen to Humans versus Machines. The first two episodes are about the rise and fall of IBM Watson, sort of a parable oh, yeah. for overselling AI, and then like they promised oncology and never arrived. So. I, me I remember they were they were diagnosing people. Like with, I remember seeing a story about the Watson. They thing. promised they had all these advertisements, and it never came true. Oh, so wow. is this a fad or not? You can listen to Humans versus Machines and get a little history lesson that might be applicable now. Thank you, Dr. Gary. Thank Hope you. to Dr. talk Gary? to you soon. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right. Do you guys, when you use Siri or Alexi, do you say thank you after... Uh, after they commit, or I mean, after they finish your task. I do say please. You say please. You're very polite about it. I yeah, just, just, polite. just in the off chance that in five or 10 years, the robots yeah, are coming around it's worth it. and they're like holding a gun to my Thank head you, Siri. and they're like, you know what? Oh, yeah. You were, you were nice. He was, he was nice a courteous, he was a courteous human. <laughs> he was a courteous <laughs> He'll human. He'll remember. You shall work the mines. Yeah, cobalt. that's what I was You shall say. work the cobalt mines. He won't us. put up, he won't put up much of a fight. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you could be the, the court gesture, oh, you know, that's entertain what I them, them. I sing us think a song. Of, yeah, uh -huh. I always think about what my role in the, the post-apocalyptic post world would be. I mm -hmm. got building skills, so they need me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm screwed. All right. Yeah. Well, but the effort... Let's not forget about ah, that. Right. Morgan J. Live at the Village. Yeah. Please check that out. It's coming out soon. New yeah. York City, Sony Hall, Friday, Saturday. This Friday, Saturday, we're doing Adam Kroll and Friends there. So be some uh, oh, nice. folks hanging out with me there. I got the pay-per-view with uh, Brad Williams and Kimmel yeah. Hume. You can check that out. Tickets are on sale as we uh, yeah, speak. Go to liveone.com slash Corolla Live. Tickets going yeah. fast. So I'll act bet now. a couple of these spots too. That's nice. And until next time, Adam Crow for Chris Max Patton, Morgan J, and Dr. Gary Marcus say it. Mahala. Mahala.